This here is a program, and this program is brought to you by Manscaped. If you need to escape your man, text Dangle. Actually, don't do nope. that. Don't text Dangle. <laughs> so you put the promo code Dangle in. I was trying to, trying to do something to, get, to raise Steve's spirits. Well, Adam, you're hiding you know, behind the microphone there. Here's, here's what's important is you were really close and we can take a lot of positives from that. <laughs> Dangle, uh, 20% off, free shipping, manscaped.com. Check it out right now. Let's start the show. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Canada's Sportsbook. Steve the Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. Let's go! Ba- back at it, he, they say. I'm all ready for game eight. Who's ready? No, honestly. Is that I'm, your towel I'm from waving, the game? I am waving my towel from the game. Jesse and I were at game seven. So no matter what, and you can actually see there's some stains there. No matter what, I could oh. say at least once I went to a game seven. And because it was a Leafs game seven, they did not win. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it was still a lot of fun to be there. And the crowd was bananas, and I really enjoyed it. Do you guys regret spending money on going to that game? No, it's unbelievable. Not, not a, not a penny. <laughs> Good. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. It'd be a shame if you had any other reaction. <laughs> well, <I> think, <laughs> were you expecting us to be like, no, we didn't like going Boy, that, to that hockey game that with was, that team we love? What? Listen, what? That support, <laughs> win or lose, man. Win or lose. It's I. You, you know why I ask? Because at least you got to see a good product, but um, did you see the, I think it was NBA on TNT compilation of fans of the Phoenix Suns <laughs> sitting there no. at oh, the beginning just, of just the fourth sad. quarter? Like, well, all of them, Lord knows how, mu- how much those tickets cost, and they're all just sitting there like, well, I guess I'll sit through another quarter of this shit. Well, that's because Luka Doncic <laughs> had as many points as the Suns did in the first half. Dude, I couldn't believe. I thought, I thought like uh, the Twitter app made a typo or something. It's crazy when I saw that. It was like, who's up by thirty at that? It would be. It was like if Calgary had scored on all the shot attempts that they actually had on Dallas last. Oh my god! You know what I mean? Like if that, if that's what the game felt like, it was crazy. But I, I think, I don't know, Jesse, you back me up on this one if you want to. But I, I, I think one of the things that I want to say before we get going really into what happened and what's next is no one's getting traded today. Okay, number one. Uh, We're not trading uh, anyone. I don't know. We're not trading anyone on the show today. No, I don't know. CJ is going to join us later this week, I believe Wednesday in studio. Wednesday in studio, Chris Johnston, annual tradition. We're going to unpack what happened. And which is great. the Leafs media day is tomorrow. Yeah, it's tomorrow. So, so there'll be perfect. it'll be fresh off of that, which is great. And there's a CJ article out today that I want to mention later on. But I want to say this. One real positive that we absolutely can take from this series what? is that anytime somebody, and that whenever they do this, they, they're doing this to troll Toronto fans. Anytime somebody has anything to say about what Leaf fans are like in the building, mm-hmm. it is now outdated. That crowd was oh. unbelievable. It was unbelievable all series long, and we were screaming right to the end. And I can tell you, um, uh, Leaf fans are as passionate as they come. Sometimes that is bad. Most of the time, it's good. Mm -hmm. And in that building, which admittedly in the past has been quiet, but the team sucked for a decade. So what do you expect? The fan base was there. Everybody from the platinum section right at the front, all the way back, had Leafs jerseys on. Uh, There there wasn't a a single person in there that was not a Leaf fan, that was not standing up, that was not screaming, that was not waving their towels. So that bullshit is over. We can stop with that right now. If you make a, a sushi joke about a Leafs fan, then it's like, oh, you haven't been to a playoff game in 2022 in Scotiabank. Right? Also, game. the because sushi's pretty good. Not going to lie. No, it's I not. Have, I've, eat, I've eaten it's, sushi it's at the game. Good. It's not bad. <laughs> it's like the ones you get at like Metro. Oh. You know, when they're, they're like frozen. <laughs> oh, listen. Place. Jesse's too good for a bento box. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But I, I would like bento boxes. I wouldn't say like, oh, they, you know, top notch sushi. Good. They have good dumplings too. They got, they got <laughs> great bento box if you want that. Yeah. But like, yeah, if, if you're making jokes about Leafs crowd being quiet and sitting on their hands, like, okay, so you haven't been to a game in a while. Right. Because that's the complete opposite atmosphere. We have an as good atmosphere as any other team in the league. And you're going to see that during the regular season at some point next year someone's going to be like, well, Listen, Leaf fans are yeah. quiet today. Not yeah, every yeah, yeah. Wednesday in November. Is that exciting? Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 We're talking so, about when it matters. The fans show up. They do. And there was like 15,000 people out front too. 
Oh, yeah. You know, so you're you're talking like thirty thousand people just well, within and, and, a kilometer. Every over thirty thousand people in the no, watch the leaves game. That doesn't count. That doesn't count. That doesn't count at all. I want to. I just want to give Toronto uh, the credit that they deserve for inventing that Maple Leaf Square that now Which every other doing. city now has. Yep. Every friggin' in every sport, they're panning to the crowd out front. We did that. Yeah. That's ours. We did it first. I believe. I think the Raptors did it before the Leafs. But they get it because the playoffs started like a week earlier. Yeah. So yeah. The Raptors because the president it? of the team <laughs> got up in front of the crowd and said, fuck Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know what? It remains true to this day. Fuck Brooklyn. Fuck Brooklyn. That only cost them 25 grand. I know. I worth would say it. any day Worth I would it. sign that. Jack. But Tampa, Calgary, all of your little outdoor things, the Milwaukee Bucks, I see you. You're welcome. From <laughs> Toronto. You're welcome. That's right. We gave it to you. That's right. Um, now, uh, let's, let's look at the, at the loss itself. The Leafs lose. Tampa clogs the neutral zone for a good chunk of the game. Leafs can't make uh, the entries they want to make. You know, you know what? <laughs> Am I wrong? No, I, was I, was, I thought Adam was trying to set up. <laughs> no, no, you go. You get in. Get in. Get in. Get in the car. Well, let's no, go. No, 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 because I know you're setting up the Leafs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me. You're so setting like up the Leafs. Things. And I want to give uh, Tampa their props. Please. Dude. Uh, the fact that they won Game Seven largely without Nikita Kucherov and without Braden Point. The fact that Braden Point tried to play a shift mm -hmm. after that, and Nick Nick Paul scoring two goals, right? Mm -hmm. And like, the first two of his Stanley Cup playoff career, and and not even they weren't easy goals. Like especially that second one, nope. he just he said, "I'm going to score," and he yep. did. Nick Paul, uh, Andre Vasilevsky, not that great of a series. Mm -hmm. Best game in Game Seven. That's that's championship DNA, and they showed it in Game Seven, man. They absolutely did, and so yeah. Well, uh, so, at no, so. I think you're right, and at no point on this show are we going to take away from Tampa's performance, nope. obviously, no, I because think the, I think the better team won. And that's, no, I just I don't know. You like to get it out of the way right away. Yeah, Tampa clogged the neutral zone, and that was the thing, right? And you, it made the least power plays largely ineffectual. When we talked about at the beginning of the series, how if if Toronto's penalty kill, which had a great game one, but really wasn't as as sturdy afterwards. What did I say when the series began? If you if you collapse in as Toronto's penalty kill, you will lose, and that's what happened. They largely backed off. What I saw, uh, at least from you know from being there, gap control became an issue, and it became an issue more and more over the series. But even on five on five, you could see moments where it's like you see the defenseman backing off, and it's allowing. Tampa Bay more options. And so, uh, unfortunately, and I know it was a bit of a low event game until the third period, it, it really did. When you do that, I think there's a psyche, a psyche thing too. You're not feeling confident enough to close that gap and take a risk. Well, do you know what I'm the saying? Weapons. The weapons. Yeah, the weapons. Kutrov on one side, Stamkos on the other, Hedman at the point. Mm -hmm. um, they can do that. Um, that play that I can't believe they didn't get a goal off of mm -hmm. where it looks like they're setting up Kutra for a one-timer and then he slap passes it into the slot to point. Mm -hmm. I think Killorn is in front of the net. Dude, <laughs> what do you do? What do you do? Mm -hmm. What do you do? And and I mm. think I, I have to tell you, um, the it was painful to be in the arena and see that Tavares goal called back. Oh, I couldn't. So you don't you don't hear the feed, right? No. So imagine my surprise <laughs> when uh, like I just saw Tavares's expression. I'm like, why does he look upset? Mm -hmm. So, again, I'm streaming the game. There's thousands of people watching. I can't hear the, uh, the crowd. I can't hear the whistles. I can't hear the commentators. I can't hear nothing. So imagine my surprise in that moment. <laughs> What, right. what was it like for you guys? Well, we were screaming. We were screaming. Right. It was probably 10, 15 right. seconds before we even. We probably knew it, though, before the broadcast. Because I watched the whole game back on Sunday. I like to go back and watch the game whenever I see it. You're uh, a, there you're a sick of fans. You didn't hear the whistles. Left. So uh, when, when I watched the broadcast back on Sunday, they, he scored the goal and then they went to commercial. And that whole time, no. it was still a goal. And when they came back from commercial is when, when <gasps> in the stadium, they were doing the uh, no goal, the ref, Wes McCauley or whoever oh, no. goal, is, at the, is at the ice doing the it's Can no Can you imagine goal, being a fit? Imagine we were home watching. Oh, yeah. We knew oh, before you know everybody watching on TV. I'm surprised because I don't remember. Right. I d because I get the broadcast feed. Really? Yeah, yeah. That's that's how it went down. They went to commercial and then uh, they came back and they explained oh. the whole penalty. If you were watching, I'm so sorry. <laughs> what a horrible commercial break. Yeah. 
Oh. Well, and I lost my mind. Of course. I we lost, all did. I lost my mind for something that is and isn't a penalty. So and it's and it's it's <sighs> what did you think of the play? I I to me it's it's why hockey is unwatchable to a non-fan in a nutshell. Like it is a penalty. Like Hall listen, that should be a penalty. Okay. It should. It's it's interference not with a hard hit, a stiff hit, a dangerous hit, but it's interference in a way that affects puck position. It's setting a pick, basically, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. It That's why I thought it shouldn't be a penalty. I don't think that's a penalty in the playoffs ever. This ever. Is, this is the problem is, you know, because I had, you know, the producers are in my ear like, no, no, you're going to want to get another look at this. And I do. But I'm mid rant because now it's coming back to me. I'm mid rant because I'm filling a commercial break. Do you remember now? Well, I'm starting. <laughs> I had to fill time after the Leafs had a goal called back in game seven. And we're about to head to the penalty kill. So they make you tap dance the entire commercial break? What w what was the other option? Run commercials. We don't do that. We don't do that. We've never done that. Oh, be a great opportunity at more revenue. Anyway, I I think uh, it, okay. It's <laughs> of my this is the time to solve that. Yeah, this isn't. Uh, oh my god! Look at my one hundred and fifty heart rate. I was I was coming undone. So yeah, I had to fill that commercial break. I had only seen the replay a, a couple times. Yeah, there's Tavares. The big selly and Giordano looks deflated right away. Cameras on the crowd. Crowd's going ballistic. Tampa Bay bench looks dejected. And then this was the shot where I was like, mm -hmm. what's happening? What's happening right now? And they know not only is this not a goal. Look at my face. Look at my face. And that's the producer getting in my ear. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't yeah. believe it. So it's you can see Steve, by the way, if you're listening to the audio thing, you could see Steve just grabbing his face and then well, so and then like the, the, here's the thing. Here's when I can tell Steve's intense. His eyebrows are halfway up his forehead. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> and, and they don't move. It's a lot of forehead. And so what, what I've started to do, and this is a crutch now, but I, I'm going to have a hard time shaking it is when I'm getting when I'm being told information, I grab my headphones. There's nothing wrong mm -hmm. with that. No, yeah, to, to communicate to the audience, like I'm someone speaking to me, and I'm yeah. getting it. That's a cue. And I have the timeline a little wrong. So they do the call, and then they go to commercial, but they don't have the replay of the interference. So you don't know what. So it was no, so you, you, okay. you have Wes McCauley going, and he makes the power play call. So that happens so before it was, the it commercial. So it was Wes McCauley, not Eric Furlan. Uh, I'm not sure which. I just doesn't assumed matter. it was Wes McCauley. It doesn't really matter. So he makes the call here. And then they go to commercial break, and then they come back and they explain so the penalty kill. Uh, that hey, they're going to the penalty kill, and that was that was the pick. So you know uh, the goals waved off, and then you're kind of left in limbo, and you kind of fill there. So that's the kind of time. Just to get that straight for everybody. Yeah, it, and Anyways. yeah, if you're uh, if you're um, a new fan looking to get into the sport, ah, not for you. No, like <laughs> no, like no. good luck, good like luck. No, no, listen. <laughs> if if you if you've been watching your entire life, you have a shot. At understanding, if you're new, eh, I know. I, I don't know. I, this might be time to cut bait. <laughs> it was interesting. Morgan Riley uh, said after the game, he's like, "I'm not even sure." Look, look at me. I'm calling for the replay. Yeah. I'm like spinning my finger. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah. Morgan Riley said after the game, "I'm not even really sure what the rules are." Yeah. And that's the thing, right? Because here's 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 how the refs had set it up. Games one to five, <sighs> they called everything, everything, sticks, holds, all that. Game six. Um, they stopped. You saw, you know, every Leafs no, fans were going ballistic game about Game one to five in the first period. Okay. After the first period of game five, it all dried up. There it is. So then, you know, you saw Matthews kind of getting pulled by one of the Tampa players. I forget who it was. Matthews getting uh, pulled by Kalorn. Matthews hitting Riley Kucherov getting from shoved out of the way in front of the net by Ross Colton. Mm -hmm. There was a pick on Matthews. I believe it was in game six, high in the zone. So... Yeah, it's a penalty. Yeah, it should probably be called most of the time. It isn't. But I could see the context, right, where people look at that in a vacuum and go, like, if you weren't watching the game, mm -hmm. you look at that and you go, yeah, of course it's a penalty. What the fuck are they complaining about? In the context of what we saw, though, they were calling, calling, calling. No, let's stop now. Yeah. And that's the players asked for it. We asked yep. for it. Yep. Call the game. Yep. Had they continued, remember, game five, middle of the second period to a game 
uh, game seven. That's a game or two and a half games or two games or whatever since that had changed. If you set that tone, you have to keep to that tone. Jesse, I'm sorry. I think that call was a direct result of Stamkos raising his arm. I think Stamkos got that call called. On well, the, the, the least re- fans got one, right? Yeah, the least fans got one. Stamkos has a, a huge reputation around the league. He, there he is raising his hand right there as soon as it happens of being on top of those little things and getting the ref's attention. Like he's great at drawing penalties. Man, and he's him. always talking to them. And they, they know like, okay, if, if something happens on there, Stamkos is going to be in our ear. He's going to be yelling. And I think him immediately raising his hand at this pick gets the ref's attention, makes that call. And y- you know what's funny? Uh, I was talking to some people and they're like, why doesn't hockey have like a, ch- a, a penalty challenge, like a one penalty challenge per game, like the NBA. And, and the reason you can't do that is it'll be a penalty every single time. It'll hmm. be a penalty every single time because, and, th- and this is why I said in my video, yes, it's a penalty, but what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> B- because... There's, there's, how many infractions do you think there are in any given NHL game? 50? <laughs> yeah, probably. My probably. bet is 50. And how many get called? Five? Eight? Sometimes eight? 10? Somewhere between 10 to 15%. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe 10 to 20% of infractions in any given game are called. So if you have a challenge, and you, like, let's say you can only use it in the third period or something like that. It's going to get called every time. Mm-hmm. So like if, if the Leafs challenge that to say, no, it's not a penalty, they'd fail the challenge. Absolutely. By the letter of the law, you can call it a penalty. Yeah. But you, like, what, you if, can. what works, then but if they you're did. able to be like Alex Kalorn on that last play and then Tampa goes, well, we're going to use ours to negate that. Michael Bunting with the inter- interference right behind that. It, it's so it, you wouldn't be able to institute it. And this is Wes McCauley, who's done over a thousand games in the NHL and over a hundred in the Stanley Cup playoffs. This is Eric Furlat, who's done over a thousand games in the NHL and over a hundred in the Stanley Cup playoffs. This is the best we can do. God help us. It it is what it is, guys. Mm-hmm. So Wes McCauley's revenge on Steve. <laughs> he knew it was coming. Uh, the McCauley Steve revenge game. Oh yeah, yeah. The score is currently twenty five to nothing, Wes. <laughs> like <laughs> I, I think. Okay, now let me let me say this for all you fans that are not fans of the Leafs. Um, it's so sorry. as Leaf oh fans, we are experts in Game Seven. No, we are connoisseurs in Game Seven. We are we are the Somalia version. I'm going to pretend of that Game means. Seven losses. Yeah, and on the scale of horrendous Game Seven losses, let me just say this. Okay, this was the best one. This was one of the one, and I know that sounds, oh, loser's mentality. I'm going to get that in the cat. You can, uh, you can fly a kite. I don't care. The reality was, I finally felt like the Toronto Maple Leafs lost to, opponent, to an opponent that truly deserved it versus they a, the Leafs yeah. shot themselves in the foot with being too young, Washington, bad coaching, Boston and Boston, um, being not motivated and coming off a COVID season. And really, the team was full of holes, too. Columbus, Montreal, you lose Tavares, Dano shuts you down, and frankly, you lose a, a series you, you never should have lost. You choked. Yeah. They that, choked last that year. That game was choked in game six. Game game five, game six, game seven, choke, choke, choke. Yeah. I, and, and you know what? If you're a fan of another team and you want to dunk on the Leafs for that, 100%. G- game I, seven, the LFR, when I, when I went off after they lost the Montreal series, easiest video I've ever shot. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, you just shit on them for half an hour because they deserved video. it. Easiest, and they deserved every word. Yeah, right. And they deserved every word. I had 48 hours to plan for their inevitable loss. Mm -hmm. Uh, This year's was incredibly hard because I'm like, I have no idea what to say. Well, and and it comes down to, so now instantly, even on the way home, we were talking about it, like Jesse and Mm -hmm. uh, Jesse's partner, Gabby and Natalie and I were walking up the street and we're thinking like, okay, where do you go? (laughs) Uh, What do you even do? And, And Steve, you've said it before. What would you have done differently? Not a thing. Not a thing. Like, and, and here's the, the, the thing was Toronto was really great in this series. Mm. And the, if, if I were to say one thing, though, guys, and this, it, it, this isn't talent. Um, this is, there is something that this team has struggled with for years that I think was brought back down to a minimum this year. But it does appear in their game is there's 
there are moments of sloppy, unfocused hockey. Yep. And when that happens, you get an errant high stick or you get a blind pass that turns into a goal. It, 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 you know, it's the um, sloppy on defensive zone exits that turn into goals. It's, you know, um, you know, you're not looking to see if there's an extra man back when a defenseman's pitching, pinching. And every single time that happened this series, Tampa capitalized. And Tampa, to me, are robotic. It does not matter yeah. what you throw at them. It does not matter that you beat them 5-0 in game one. They just keep coming. And they don't have those moments. And if they do... It doesn't really matter because even if you capitalize on it, they're still going to keep coming. And in the haunting, what, one, of the, one of the things that's going to haunt me the most about this series is not the, the not the penalty situation. The, the you Tavares, can't blame the refs. Yeah, Tavares, at the end of the day, you can't blame the refs. Yeah, Tavares' goal called back or not calling Kalorn in overtime. They were healthy. They were healthy. And, and Braden yeah. Point's leg exploded. Kucherov was taking like 20 second shifts. Who on the Leafs was hurt? Now, tomorrow we're going to find out like guys were playing her. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised if a couple guys got like off season surgery. Muzzin's probably on a bunch of stuff just to get on the ice. Yeah, yeah. I would not you know. be shocked at all. And I wouldn't be shocked if Campbell got surgery. Mm. And Bunting is probably, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. Bunting was, it looked something. like he was hurting. Oh, man. Really? I thought he was getting better as the series went. Mm -hmm. He did look better. I but thought he, he was going right. faster. He still didn't look like himself. Let me, let me run you through some names here, guys. Oh. Names and points. Matthews, nine points. Ah! Marner, eight points. Ah! Nylander, seven points. Tavares, six. Probably with the seventh with that goal, if it had gone the right ah. way. Mikheyev had, had four. Bunting, Jesse, had three. You know, those are pretty... That's pretty solid for the forward group. Mm -hmm. but they all had a three-point game. And by the way, I, I didn't put Morgan Riley in there. Not Morgan enough, Riley had six. Not enough of those are on the power play. This is the number one power play in the league. Mm -hmm. If they didn't show up as the number one power play in the playoffs, Tampa shut them down in that respect. And if you get a couple more power play goals, uh, the series goes completely differently. And I think Kelly Rudy postgame uh, on the broadcast had, the, I think, one of the best answers to your question, Adam on what happened here and what where where do you improve and what goes wrong and he said um what went wrong is game two when you have a lead game three when you have a lead game six when you can close it out and, and had a lead and had a lead and those opportunities is where the Leafs struggled it's you had chances here to send tampa home to get a huge lead in the series and every single time they failed to do that every single game there was lapses where they lost and they didn't show up. And those opportunities where you can try, uh, just if it's about effort here, you can put in a little more effort and not let Tampa get into the series. I'm going to do this off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. Game one against Washington blew a 2-0 lead. Game six against Washington, you were leading in the third period. Game seven against Boston the next year, you're leading in the third period. Game. <laughs> well, well, yeah, game six the and seven. series last year, you had a three one lead. Well, you had six it. and seven in the second Boston series to close it out. At least we're up three two. Oh, shit, mm -hmm. you're right. You had a three two. But series you played lead Matthews eighteen minutes. In in oh, mm. <laughs> you had a three two series lead in 2019. Glossed over that one. You're right. A eureka comeback in game you four against Columbus. None of you were interested in. Yeah, in there. <laughs> they didn't care about that series. Yeah, yeah you weren't interested in being there, and we weren't interested in watching you no. beat it. Um, Th that might have been my my least favorite year, the Columbus oh, year. What a miserable! It was a bad year. year. That was that was the David Ayers year. That was a bad year. Terrible. Mm -hmm. Um, and like in retrospect, after watching this season with the Leafs, God, the the nineteen twenty season, what a piece of shit. What a piece well, of Well, and I shit. think I think it started, if you talk about 1920, it starts with 20 games of Babs, and I think it's hard to shake that. And I think the team got, was done. It got fun when I, Keith was in there, and they, what were they, they won like, like 18 and 2? 15 and 5 in 20 games. Yeah, and, there and they're go. like, yeah. oh man, we look way too good. Let's shed that skin. Yeah. And immediately <laughs> well, go back. And then they were too out. And then the world shut down on your birthday. And then, <laughs> and then the, yeah, but they were shit well long before that. Right. Yeah, they right. might not have made the playoffs. By the way, it wasn't fun. The Zamboni Driver video for Steve passed a million views this weekend. Oh, hooray. Isn't that cool? That's pretty cool. You got a million per Oh Come yeah, on. finally. That's pretty That's great. There's yeah. one. There's one. Yeah. Nice First one. First should, one. On we should get platform. balloons. Then you should take a picture. Yeah. You, I'll, <laughs> with David. I'll, I'll, I'll go to his go house. Go to David's <laughs> house. <laughs> you should. You need to. You need to. You need to do a video about that video with David, I think. Uh, um, we're practically neighbors. You're, you're finishing off uh, where they had the opportunity to close it out and they haven't done it. They had the lead in game six in the third period. And for the second straight year, they go down five men to three. 
uh, in a game six where they have a chance to close out the series. And then in game seven, once again, they never have the lead, not once. And this is the thing. This is what I mean about, you know, I was really hard on them earlier in the season because they were playing sloppy. And I kept saying 10 games in. Guys, I know it's 10 games in. I know. But, but it's the, the same shit. But, it, but it's, it's this sort of stuff that's going to matter come playoff time because the Leafs are in the toughest division in the sport, which means that you got to be better than the toughest division in the sport. You can bitch about refing. You can bitch about seeding. The reality is this is the way the playoffs are seeded. So if you want to win, if you're the Leafs, and this is a results-based business, so this is where I'm going to go hard a little bit. I think this is the best Toronto Maple Leafs team I have ever seen. Ever. Bar none. Fuck 93 and 94. I love those guys, by the way. Love you, Dougie. But the reality is, this is the best Toronto Maple Leafs team we've ever seen. Skill-wise, absolutely. However, the gaffes are the things exactly what, what, what yep. t- Jesse brought up with Kelly Rudy. Dial it in. Yeah, we'll, Dial it in just yeah. that little bit longer. Willie, and Tampa can do that. The Leafs can't yet. Willie I still miscalculations, think they can. Kerfoot miscalculations. Mm-hmm. Hall with that giveaway. Oh, uh, two of them. That's rough. Well, he had, he had two really bad giveaways, but it was the um, the one when they're trying to get an empty net where I wanted to reach through the screen and just... Like, we're done here with that, right? Like I whole, thought he had a good game, a really good game five. Yeah. When Justin Hall's at his best, oh, yeah. he did. So so that means he'll get 20 games before getting jettisoned. I, I, I think, well... <laughs> yeah, we, we all know the Leafs that's love a, their good game five. That's a dark joke. But let's not get... Let's let's be honest here. It They are still playing the Stanley Cup champions, but you're probably going to have to do that, right? And that's... That the Leafs knew that going into the season. You're playing Boston. You're playing Tampa. How do you have this clip ready, Jesse? That's... I got come the, prepared. Where the fuck is that path going? <laughs> it's it's one of the most egregious it's plays I've seen an NHL player make, and I've tried to defend Justin Hall Me too. Uh, consistently throughout the season because he took too much shit for just being in the lineup when he's a great penalty killer. But there were a couple plays here in Game Seven that were just like, he, he, where are you? Like, what what are you doing? What earth is that? Path what are you to doing? The Hart, Art, Art Ross Trophy, Nikita Kucherov, right at your own blue line. I'm gonna just get up a still for the people watching uh, 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 on YouTube. Okay, it's just crazy, and and it's so, even worse than I remember. Okay, but but oh. the, see see. Oh. There are opportunities to close. They don't close, and this is a results based business. There's no question about it. And so when anybody says, oh, are you guys like ap- apologizing for the, you know, it's the best Leafs team you've seen and they still can't make it out of the first. Listen, I think context is key here. The reality is the playoff seating is what it is. Second place, third. We were second. They were third. They won the Stanley Cup the last two years. It's a pretty goddamn good team. And they, and the idea that the Leafs sort of like rolled over on the lightning is absolute bullshit, which I've, I've seen out there too. That's the worst pass in human history. It's, it's oh my god! It's gaffes like that though that will kill you, especially against the Lightning. And the Leafs still have to work that out of the game. So here's the problem though: the problem isn't Game Seven, guys. The problem is this summer. This is where it gets murky. This is because Steve, I asked you, it's a great team. If you were Kyle Dubas, what would you have done differently? And you said nothing. And Jesse, you said might have tried to get on Mark Andre Fleury, but that's about it. I thought I thought the goaltending was going to be a problem in the series, and Jack Campbell was, was amazing. just as good as any other goaltender in the entirety of the playoffs for the second straight year, except for Jake Ottinger. J- Jack Campbell, yeah, Jake Ottinger. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, Jack Campbell faced Carey Price last year and Andre Vasilevsky this year, and was just about equal to the both of them. Mm-hmm. So here's. Yep. And that's amazing. You can't you can't get better goaltending. So the problem now is, despite how good this team is, results, 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 results. So essentially, you got two options: you run it back, you tinker, which is kind of what they did last year after the Montreal series, and you hope to get a few extra wins next year, and maybe you win the conference. You know, there's a few games the Leafs like. Imagine the Leafs had won all their games against Buffalo. Ah! Or a couple more games against Ottawa. At that point, they're fighting the Panthers for number one in the conference. Not blown a four-one lead against Calgary. So, uh, so you Colorado. have a so you have a really good team. So it's conceivable, I think, that the Leafs could win the win the conference next year if they tighten some of this stuff. The up. run it back thing doesn't work because the salary cap doesn't allow the Leafs to run it back. There aren't enough. Uh, there aren't enough dollars to bring back the players. Hold on, like I'm just back. before we get into that, I want to just give you the other option, and then we'll examine the both. Is that cool? Sure. Just give me one more thing. Here's the other thing. You make a bigger move. Don't forget the Masai Ujiri effect on MLSE in general, not just the Raptors. Remember, after four or five runs, Masai Ujiri 
finally said, okay, I've had enough of this. We're second, third round out every single, every single season. By the way, if, if the NHL was seeded the way the NBA is, it's likely the Leafs have at least have hit the second round by now, but probably the same result. If, you know, now, and I don't know if there's a Kawhi trade available for Dubas this summer. I don't think there is. Uh, but Masai was unwilling to do the same thing again and lose. So he put his career on the line and was rewarded. And it sounds nice in theory. We'll have to get into what that looks like. But Jesse, talk about the, the cap situation with the Leafs, at least the way you see it. Yeah. So Ilya Mikheyev is going to want more than $1.6 million. He's gone. You can't do He's that. He's gone. He's not coming. Peter Morazic still is under contract for two more years at $3.8 million. You have to do something with that deal or you're stuck with this uh, this contract, which I don't know what you're going to do. So you can buy him out and that's going to cost you about one point something on the cap, which is decent. You could do that or you pay a price to get rid of him. Jack Campbell needs a new deal. That's going to cost you a lot if you want to keep him. If the ideas of trading John Tavares, full no move. It's it's not happening. You can't do it. J- it's, people are saying trade Jake Muzzin. Can't do it. Full full no happening. trade. You could send him to the miners and like threaten him and all that stuff. But that's happen. not happening. They're not going to do that. Um, the the Geo deal is Geo going to take a million dollars? Yes, come back? he is. But he then might. yes, he he is. But then that's a left shot defense. Right. Then you have four guys on the left side who are all in your starting lineup and how who plays? Rasmus Sandin and Timothy Lilligren cannot spend a single game in the press box next year. Right. So you have yeah, they're, they're full timers now. You have 100%. too many left shot defensemen. So where does Gio fit in? You know, there and then um you okay, Spezza, we all assume is gonna take his 750 and come back yeah. if he wants to, who I knows? Know. And then it's like, okay, that might be it. Is is Wayne Simmons on the Marlies? If he, I think if Wayne's gonna retire. If he that's my bet. Okay. My bet is he retires. Yeah, but then he'd be leaving money on the table. Yeah. He okay. has an, he has another year at nine hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, that's a lot of money. How does how does his deal uh break down? In terms of actual money, cash, uh, yeah. cash, he's making uh, yeah, no way, a million dollars. <laughs> yeah, it's so a million. He made, yeah, he made seven hundred this year, and it's a million next. No way. And so we, then maybe Roby to Island. Then he, he could, he could. Mm-hmm. That's something. And we know the competitor that Wayne is. He wants to play. He wants, he wants a million play. dollars. He wants to go out there. He wishes he was in the playoffs. Series. It's a long regular season, man. Mm-hmm. Like even if you don't Steve, want him, Steve. It's he a was, long. He was. Not, he was not good enough. No. No, I agree. At, he was not good enough at any point this year. Uh, he wasn't bad, but he was not good enough. He did not earn those minutes. He did not. And I love Wayne Simmons. I grew up down the street from the man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the reality was when, when he was on the ice, nothing happened. Nothing. I, uh, you know, we're talking about how on earth to fix the Leafs. And I think it was Harnish on Game Over Toronto mm-hmm. made a great point. What do you say? They squandered so many draft picks <clears throat> between, I think it was... Well, Seth Jarvis and... Well, no, well, ha, those are just the ones they gave away. Oh. Uh, we're talking about, I think it was between 2014 and 18. When Mark Hunter was running the draft. Yeah. And listen, you get Willie Marner Matthews out of that. But what Harnish said was like, okay, you have the eighth, fourth, and first overall pick. Mm-hmm. Like... You should hit. Congrats. <laughs> Congrats. It's like, I'm looking at Tampa, right? Mm-hmm. So we look at the the big money and they have all these stars and they all left money on the table. Go look at the money they're making. Not really. Not really. Braden Point didn't. Not really. Nine and a half mil. You know, Stamkos left money. He's still getting paid. Vasilevsky get, left money. He's getting paid. Hedman left money. He's getting paid. But I, I, I look at them. 2012. Would you believe me if I told you Vasilevsky wasn't even Tampa's first pick in that draft? They had two first rounders. The first one, 10th overall, was Slater Cuckoo. Mm-hmm. 19th, Vasilevsky. 13, they get Drew Ant third overall. That pick didn't work out, but they traded him for Mikhail Sergachev. That pick did. 2014, Tony D'Angelo in the first round. Oof, Maron, but it's easier to swallow because in the third round, you get Brayden Point. 2015, you don't have a first rounder. You draft. Some guy in the second, another guy in the second, some guy 64th in the third. Doesn't matter because you get Anthony Sorelli out of it, 72nd overall. 2016, Brett Howden, gone. Lieber Hayek, gone. Kachuk, I am not sure if he's still in the system. Radish, gone. Ingram, gone. They squandered that. Guess what? Ross Colton in the fourth round. Scored a Stanley Cup winning goal last year. Cal Foot in 2017 and a few other guys who they were able to send off for picks. Tampa has consistently drafted well. 
And it's allowed them to trade their first round picks because they have the stars that they need already. It's the depth guy. You want to hang on to the stars. The depth guys that you can come in, they can play and they move on. You know, they, they weren't afraid to throw a first for Blake Coleman and a first for, who's the guy that went to New York? Barkley Goudreau. Barkley Goudreau. They were not afraid. And then lose another one in the expansion draft. But here's the, the problem with the Leafs when it comes to the draft is once you, uh, like when it comes to your hydration levels, once you're thirsty, it's already too late. And the Leafs are thirsty. I think they've got some good players coming in. They I think do, that's, but I think you've seen Lilligren develop. Late. You've seen Sandine come in. You, no, it's not too it's late. Not enough. It's those, not too late. Those two as well need new contracts. Yeah, and, and they're, they're going to come in at like short term at like two million. Like uh, uh, I, I look at their system right now: Hirvonen, Nimala, Nice, Holmberg, Nice, Aberzizi, Robertson, Aberzizi, Steves, um, Dangles. Like, do, do you <laughs> do you count Sandine as part of that? No, like, no, he's a full timer. They uh, uh, all the goalies. One of them is going to hit. For God's sake. They have We're all not. these guys coming. Um, <laughs> I'm confident. I yeah. believe. Yeah, yeah. They have all these guys. They're going to hit. They're going to hit on a few of them. Mm -hmm. But they have to somehow keep this core together yeah. for at least another couple of years. D None of those dudes I just mentioned are going to be Anthony Sorelli tomorrow. No. And like, or, or Braden Point you, or even but some Ross of those, Colton. Yeah. But some of those guys can be bought. Blake Coleman, Barclay Goudreau, they can be bought. But the money's not there. You saying uh, they need $2 million raises, Logan and Sandin. They're making $800,000 this year. How about their so, starting goalie? Right. So yeah. th there's even less money because you need to pay. These I think guys. the cap, I don't think the cap's as bad as you guys think it will because you got Mikhaev, Spets, Blackwell, Geo, and Bush off, right? Those are good players. <laughs> so, so just show, oh, they're, guys, they're let me finish. Back. Let me finish. Let me finish. Kasha is an RFA, Engvall's an RFA. Sa Sandy and Lilligren. All, ideally, you'd like to have all of the RFAs back, I think, if, if Kosh is healthy, right? So, well, um, how much? I think the biggest, <laughs> the biggest problem here, Adam, mm -hmm. is who the hell is going to be the one responsible for signing those deals? Uh, Dubas is going to be back. <laughs> Look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read I'm you. I'm not, no, I'm no, not sure, man. I, I think you're absolutely wrong on that. I think you could not be after oh, the season this team had. I wouldn't do it. You think that they're? You think the Leafs are going to move on from Dubas after the season they just had? There's no I think fucking way. No yeah. way. Do you have yeah. a source on that, or is it just a thing? You have a source on that that says that. Yeah. Really? I think I think Brendan Shanahan uh, is really? riding with yep. Dubas because that's who that's who we went with after Lou, right? He he was Lou yep. or Dubas, and he sided with Dubas, and he let Lou go. So if, it would be a strange move if Shanny lets Dubis go, then the next person to leave is Shanny. And then who? Hundred percent. Right. No, I, I agree. Yeah, that's that's the timeline we're looking at. I so agree. is he is, is Brendan Shanahan willing to stake his reputation on whoever he brings in to replace Dubis? Because what you that's would need exactly what he'd be. If doing. you're firing yeah. Kyle Dubis, it's not to promote Lawrence Gilman. If you're firing mm -hmm. Kyle no. Kyle Dubis, it's to change the entire idea of mm -hmm. where this team is going. Yeah, because all those guys that are assistant GMs are um, are people that are Dubas people. They're Dubas disciples. They believe in this process. I have to tell you, whoever that source is, they might they, they for sure know more than I do. But I can tell you, I think that's fucking crazy. Yeah. I think this this team has been pretty damn good. I don't know how you fire a second place general manager. I don't know how that's possible. I, and and I, I look at this too. Look at this. Okay, so Friedman Friedman was on five ninety this morning. He said they'll be looking for more tenacity in their top six. I'm assuming that's a JT Miller type player. Right? That's what they what would love. Um, questions about where Tavares might play in the lineup, whether he's center or wing next year. I can see a switch. I think that makes sense. He couldn't drive play in the Tampa series in the way that I think he wanted to. Ma imagine how potentially dominant he could be as a winger. Now, du or, uh, Freach does say that he thinks Dubas will be back next season. Uh, wonders if there's an extension in the cards or not. And then lastly, he does think that this has to be his summer of Kawhi, though. Like you have to, he said, the Leafs have to consider a major move. He does think Giordano will be back at a lower number. Nice. Um, yeah. And that, like again, short-term deals for Sandy and Lilligren, the $2 million range. But the one thing he did say, and I'm actually happy to hear this, uh, because I have a source on what Campbell's initial ask was for his contract extension. Five and a half? Uh, no, seven. <laughs> and the Leafs offered, their opening offer was 275. <laughs> Now you got to remember, and I told you this earlier. Right, guys, we're close. 
<laughs> we're, so, we're getting this done. And, and when so, was this? <laughs> this is like January, this is, was it not? Which the the when the initial did he ask for yeah, when the they initial. they've been talking all season, right? The initial ask was when was when uh, was Campbell all-star. was playing better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, it was like okay. January, but, right? But if you're Kurt Overhart, who is his agent, Kurt Overcharge, known in the industry, mm-hmm. if you're Kurt Overhart, you look at it and you go. Okay, well, he had a, a bad month and a half, but he was also injured. But he was also an all-star, and he was also great. Yeah. That's how you frame it, right? If you're the agent for the player. I think he's going to get at least what Allmark got. Right. Because, uh, like, I Four mean, and a half, four, seven, which five. Which is how much for people who don't uh, know. Can you pull it up? <laughs> Please. <laughs> it, was like, I, I, it was like I, five or less. It was really... It was four and a half, but it was... I think it was four and a half, but it was for Lemus five years. Allmark, his current deal is $5 million on the cap for five Four years. Never mind. It's a so good there, deal. So he gets deal. he gets good money. He gets good term. Not wild. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You know, you look at Jack's track record of success. It's rather recent. Same with Allmark. Like, I don't think he's able to ask for what Markstrom got, which is six times six. I agree. So, I mean, I've been saying this for months, haven't I? The I pro- still think that's the benchmark right the, there. The- Allmark. The, Five million. <laughs> the problem I have, excuse Depending me for coughing, guys. The problem I have is with you know coughing? with with Jack Campbell and value and coughing is that you know if you're picking up Jack Campbell, you have to have another goalie because Jack Campbell is not going to play uh, a full season. He will get injured at some point. Yep. I don't think Peter anybody. Marazic. Yeah, I don't think anybody's building their goaltending like uh, they're expecting anybody to play seventy games anymore. You know, but, we but, need. I we mean, need you, 50, we need 50 games out of a starting goaltender in, in 2020 and Jack cannot get to 2023. Well, I think like, that's the new philosophy of goalies. Let's let's look for some good news. You got more than you probably thought you had in Eric Shalgren. Mm-hmm. So that's good. Mm-hmm. I think Shal- I think Shalgren and Campbell could go 50, uh, 40, whatever that is. Shalgren could even remain the third. Mm-hmm. Have him go up and down. You know, wall. It's better than Hutchinson. Wet his whistle. Yeah, Hodge, uh, Hodge is gone. You know, uh, we keep saying that. Carter Hutton's gone. We've been saying that a long, no, why can't long time. Hodge, why can't Hodge play for the Marlies? What's wrong with that? Because that's enough. No, no I, it's like Martin Marincin. I, I am yeah. inevitable. That's enough. <laughs> let him play for the Marlies. That's enough. Nah, let him play. So I, I think here's what's going to happen here. It, it, and I'm not trading players, but I am going to say that it's hard to see contracts like Justin Hall's back. It's hard to see contracts like um, Peter Morazic's back. Um, Engvall was on a discount. Who'd have thunk it? Yeah, he played great. One point. I don't think Mikheyev is back. I think he's gone. Um, yeah, it's too much money. Spezza is a UFA. I think he'd, you know, ideally he'd be a nice depth option. I think he's the option that they'd they'd rather have rather than Wade Simmons currently. Yeah, for the guys, for the guys like Spezza, Clifford, Simmons, I I still say it's a really long regular season. Like you need you need guys to just get in and fill play. out the roster. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And like. Clifford will be back. Drag you into the fight? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's under contract for two more years at 762. Oh. Remember he signed that extension? So Clifford's going to be on the team. He's on the Marlins. I got I to put my glasses on because yeah. I forgot. I've been, I've been so laser focused on these playoffs. Mm-hmm. The Leafs actually made a bunch of signings that I've completely forgotten about. So, well, okay. Abrazizi, we know, was under contract. Clifford. Oh, my God. That's so weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if they locked him up for two more years. I totally forgot about that. Bunting's got another year, which I love. Mm-hmm. Bunting's got another year. That's which a great is signing. Awesome. Camp has another year, which, which is awesome. There's a lot of good news, like when it comes to this team. Uh, all this to avoid the uncomfortable conversation that I think the big move is Willie. And so, how do you get better based on? You, I don't think you do. Based on this you, this is not me endorsing that trade. You okay. firing Dubis with your source. Yeah. <laughs> that's that. That's the pathway to moving one of the big pieces, right? Yeah. You bring in the new guy who's not attached, and you say, okay, the new guy came here and he shaked everything up with a big Willie trade or whatever it is. Because if you project it uh, two years down the line, you're like, okay, we're not going to be able to do the UFA deal that Willie wants. He's going to go somewhere else, so we're not going to have him. So why don't we get pieces for that? You know, so. If 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 you're right about them contemplating moving Dubis, that seems a natural fit to move Willie. Look what Buffalo got for Eichel, and look how long that took. Now, granted, there was a lot involved there, um, you know, with the with the surgery and everything. But these double digit deals are hard to move. So, 
you know, Marner, star in this league, best year of his career, 35 goals, 97 points, scored at over a 100 point pace. That's how do you move that? You don't. Who's just got 11 mil? Who's who has both the 11 million in cap room and assets to acquire Mitch Marner? Well, we're not doing that. We're no, not going to. You're not, not going to be no, the two no, best no, players. It's not even. No, 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 no. Put it out there. No, no. Because people are like, it's going to be one of the big three. Well, it's not Matthews. You can't do Tavares. So logically, it's Marner. Well, no, not so logically. First of all, the team is going to be so much worse without him. My opinion has changed dramatically since last year. Um, but to even get that deal done, that's going to take months and months and months. And it probably doesn't even make you better. In the, definitely not in the short term and possibly not in the long no, term. No, he's 24. He's getting yeah. better. Yes. The, and he's been unbelievable in the playoffs. <laughs> there have been some, has there been some issues like, you know, him not racing out that icing? Sure. Wait, are you talking about Marner or Not Willie? Neilander. Oh, no, no we're still talking about Marner. I was still talking about Marner. Willie? He makes a hair under seven. It's an attractive deal. It's a it, tradable contract. It's a super tradable contract. Oh, I don't like this. And... Listen, what, Steve, are you saying? No, I'm not saying. I'm not saying do this. I'm not saying this makes sense. I'm not saying it's going to make the team better. I'm saying it is easily, easily the easiest move the Leafs can make. You're all, you're, you're all looking at Kerfoot, and, you know, all, you know, get, I, Kerfoot and Kerfoot. And Hall. <laughs> and Kerfoot and Hall. It's not going to move the needle. Guys, Man, that's it's, five point five million dollars. Yeah, but you guys. still have to fill those spots. Nah. <laughs> How about you do <laughs> Willie and Kerfoot and Hall? If there's going to be a move this off season, it's that one. Ugh, I hate that, and it's going to hurt. Why don't we just like reunite JT and Marner and Willie and Matthews, and then we call it a day. That'll fix oh, the whole Marner situation. Oh, because Marner Matthews will never get split up again. I can guarantee you, those guys would. And here's the other thing. So, so CJ. <laughs> CJ said this summer is a big deal for a different reason, and it's he's, he wrote it in his article in the on the Star. You know, people forget Matthews' contract is up in two years after mm-hmm. this, oh. and his no trade kicks in next summer. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, his no move. And part of the problem with that is that you know if they can't if they continually don't get over the hump, I'm not saying he's going to Arizona because uh, he's not going to Arizona. But you know, you look at teams like LA, New York. Uh, the Panthers. Rangers, the Rangers are cool, you know. No, that, that's what I mean, right? Do you like, sell high after a sixty goal <laughs> season. They're not talking about trading. They're talking about Matthews could all because it's his right walk right to free agency and do whatever he wants. No, no, no Steve, explore that. <laughs> <laughs> and and so I'm kidding, by the way. And I want to ask Chris about this because I have heard that the Leafs are pretty hard on their on their players. And they don't hmm. really like there's really? certain there's certain players that you would expect to get not treated differently, but it's like there's just a leadership group on this team and they should be, I guess, a little more vaunted as such. Now, the Leafs are very afraid of doing that because what happened in the late 90s and early 2000s was they had a string of success and then you had a bit of a culture, uh, supposedly, I don't know if this is true. Blue and white disease. The, the blue and white disease, the entitlement thing. You got to Toronto, you made it, smoke a cigarette, you're done. Hmm. Where I, I think the Leafs are like, have they've overcorrected to the point where it's like, sorry, $10 million, $11 million player, you're just the same as Blackwell. And you're not. Is that a holdover from Lou? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that was a Lou Lamarell. And that needed to happen. That cultural reset needed to happen. It was the right thing. And it helped them. But at a certain point, you know, I think the Golden State Warriors are pretty good to Steph Curry. Probably. <laughs> right? <laughs> and you have the you have the Toronto version of Steph Curry and Austin Matthews. I think Austin Matthews, uh, based on how he's played this season and how he played in the playoffs, it's time for him to be captain. It's time. Um, and that's not to say Tavares has been bad because I've been his biggest defender all year. It's time to hand the torch over. Austin Matthews should be, needs to be the captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs because in fact he is. And beyond that, it's better, it's more than just being the best player, right? People do lead, when he starts throwing bodies out there against Tampa Bay, don't the, doesn't the Leafs play start to pick up? Don't the fans start to cheer a little bit harder? Did he not lead the team in hits? I'm pretty I think sure. he might have. Yeah. Like he was, he was an animal. Ah. I think that's, that's a guy, now I'm not saying making him the captain keeps him here. 
Uh, and I don't also want to pretend like the Leafs are like the little brother, like we are in every other sport where it's like, well, I could play in Canada, that one city, or I can play at home in the United States. I think that he wants to be here, but I think they got to make some moves with that in mind. And I think CJ's banging the money. And when he comes in, I want to ask him a little for a little more clarity on that. Because I've heard that from several people, and I want to know what his thoughts are. He could be named captain when he signs his extension next summer. <sighs> I don't. I wouldn't wait. I wouldn't wait. I wouldn't wait. You got to. You got to talk it into. It a feels system. like we just. Jesse, I have a vision. It feels like we <laughs> just resigned. had the Austin Matthews negotiations for this contract. I know. You know. It feels like that was just yesterday because it never ended. It and, was uh, Nylander. It was Tavares signed Nylander yeah. forever. Matthews quickly Marner for eighteen months, even though it was really six. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know, guys. I think that there's an issue there. Now, the one thing I will ask. Don't forget the Morgan Riley extension. Oh, that kicks in. It's oh, 2.5 uh, more. Lilligren, uh had a has a performance bonus that's going to eat into the... <laughs> he got it cap. on the last day of the season. Did he? The, I think it was a plus minus. It's a plus <laughs> minus <laughs> bonus. How does that get How in much there? is it going to eat? How much is it going to eat? I think it's 212. Yeah, it's two something on the cap. Whatever. But like, that's a fourth liner's left left arm. Who cares? How did, how did we sneak in a plus minus bonus that hits on the last that's day? That's hilarious. It's just so Leafs. Leafs. You know, like funny. O- over like half the league. Wasn't it J- bonus. Joel Farabee? Didn't he? He got a, he got, uh, he got a plus Plus minus bonus because he was top three on the Flyers and plus minus and he was minus 11. <laughs> Just oh the God, Flyers awesome. are so bad. God. <laughs> See, this is why I'm saying don't shuck. This is why I feel like you, you, you run this back and you tinker because the reason, right. because listen, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, they didn't make it past the first round. There's a lot of teams who would fucking die for this roster. This is a great roster of players. I think that you can absolutely change this around. I don't think if I were to look back into last summer, I don't think Peter Morazic was the plan. Uh, you should never read history backwards, but I don't think they went in the summer and went, Peter's our guy. They're, I don't I think, think three years. This was going to go better. Than they gave him three years. I, that's what I mean. That's why I don't think it. I think that whoever they were going after, maybe it was Linus Allmark. I, I think uh, it didn't work out. They were like, well, we got to call Peter now. And no. the agent was like three they years. Or it like right away. Done. I know, but I think all Mark was signed. To, I think you feel like they bailed on something I think else? they, they yeah, had something yeah. else or a trade in the works that didn't work out. Mm. I, I can't imagine that any team was like, I got to throw three years on Peter Morazic. I Nobody. Think, and almost $4 million. Yeah. I, I liked. Well, okay. I you didn't did like li- the cap hit. You did like the deal. I liked the deal because I was like, oh, that actually kind of makes perfect sense mm-hmm. because, well, he can't. He like he can't start the majority of games, but neither can Jack. Mm-hmm. They're kind of so. This is the Leafs hitching. This is by getting Morazic. They're actually hitching their wagon to Jack, mm-hmm. potentially keeping his price down. Then he becomes an all star because Morazic's injured. LOL. Um, and these guys can be a tandem, mm-hmm. and it's worked out in the worst way possible. I do, think- you have, do you have Allen's tweet about the top 16 teams in the league and how hard it is? Because I think this goes to your point about Philly and them sucking and the Leafs being like, okay, we have something here because of how hard it is to get into this vaunted top eight second round. You know, it's, it's, a, it's not... It's fucking hard. It's not an easy it's thing really to, be a, fucking to hard. finish in the NHL as a top eight. Can you read Allen? Okay. Uh, tweet? The hardest thing for any team in the playoffs is getting over that first round hump. You go from 16 teams, top 50, to eight teams, top 25, with four wins. Many NHL coaches and players have shared that with me over the years. And, you know, I mean, he's right. But the reality is you still have to do it. Mm -hmm. So they will have to do something. And that's why the summer is so murky, right? It's just you just like you talk to you could talk to five different people and they will give you five completely different answers on what the Leafs, quote unquote, should do. The reality is none of our jobs. (laughs) <laughs> it's Kyle Dubas if he's there, right? If he's there, it's it's uh, it's it's know. Kyle Dubas. It's Sheldon Keith if he's there. I think Sheldon will be back. Brandon Shanahan if he's there. I think Shanny will be back. I mean, we'll see. But I mean, MLSC MLSC cannot cannot be happy about this. Hmm. They are an organization from t- like they're the di- they're a different MLSC than the one that we were used to in our twenties when it was kind of laissez faire and laugh we don't win whatever we made a pile of money look at all this money um, it's a little less money than we would have liked but it's still a lot of money they are now committed to winning in every sport all the time mm-hmm. Raptors uh, are never not in it uh, despite oh. the fact that stars just regularly leave town uh, TFC are back. Um, the, like, I mean, obviously they want to bring the Marlies up to support the Leafs, but no, but Adam, the media does better when the Leafs lose. 
It doesn't. What? We don't. <laughs> I we, know. Do you know Sorry, how? I get told that so often. Can I tell you I, something? I, like, dude, I literally just, oh, I God. spent the last 48 hours looking at my YouTube analytics and just openly weeping. Like, just, I, I, I cannot, oh, this, once, once. Yeah. We, ah! sport, listen, I'll tell you this. R- here's how important the Leafs are. When the Jays were doing well, Roger's stock went through the roof. Rogers as part owner of the Toronto Maple Leafs and rights holder nationally of the Toronto Maple Leafs. If the Toronto Maple Leafs got another round in, if the Jays did that, can you imagine what happened to Rogers stock if they got to the second round? There is so much money on the line here. So, so much money. And here's the problem for, for a company like Sportsnet that bought all the Canadian rights. They got two teams and they're playing each other. So they don't get the other night and its ratings, <laughs> yeah. right? Now you do get a guarantee into the third round. That's awesome. But you also but get a guarantee the one of them's out. That's right. And it's a Western night. So it starts at like nine or 10 o'clock at night for Easterners mm-hmm. too. And so most of the, and the way that Canada's works is that most of the population's in the East. It's tough. So uh, listen, you're just uh, you explaining get, how the business works. I'm just telling like, you the business. Is, the reality yeah. is they'd really like an Eastern team to stay in it. Like, like what happened last year with Montreal. That was great. You ideally like at least one on the east and one on the west. That's exactly what you want. That would be perfect. Mwah. It was like when Ottawa was good and Vancouver was good and it was at the same time and they'd rise together. Hey, this is fine. Yeah, we like this. Yeah, if it was Leafs Flames or Leafs Oilers, hey, this is Montreal, great. Senators, even the Jets. Jets are, they come on at a palatable hour for Easterners. Palatable, yeah. So I'm just, listen, uh, the reality is we don't do better. We do way worse when the Leafs lose and it's a bummer. Um, and you know, I, I think at the end of the day, there is one thing that Leafs Nation, we can't agree on. One thing. Dubis is getting fired. No. From Steve Zangle's source. The Leafs I- must change. <laughs> the Leafs must change their goal song. It's time. <laughs> okay. I didn't mind it at the beginning. I haven't said anything about it for years, but five years of Hall and Oates, followed by Game 7 Losses. Has has made me has made that song unlistenable for me. I, I I must request, man. Please, Toronto Maple Leafs event staff, please change the goal song. It really is a poo um, playoff goal song. Boo, boo. It is. On I want to see custom goal songs like some other teams do. That's I fine. like that a lot better. Yeah. Yes, let them choose. I think what they were trying to go for is what a St. Louis had with Gloria, right? Mm-hmm. Boo, but. That's like a, you know, a, a special thing. You can't force that. It just happens. Like, what do the Oilers have? La Bamba? I think so. Is it? Gloria, and we have this. <laughs> Boom. So it's time, right? <laughs> yes. Jesse, is it time? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I was on that a long time. Okay. It's not a fan. All right. So Let's... let's get into You Can Bet That, which I think you're going to find hysterically funny today because Dave Bastel is trolling us. Uh, it is Sports Interaction dot com slash sdpn by the way tips on responsible gaming uh in the description of the podcast uh wherever you get your podcast or this video as well 19 plus please play responsibly you can bet that david bastel from sports interaction go to sports com slash sdpn for uh all your needs when it comes to um what's this that david sent me the ah golf odds why i, I wonder why you would have picked that david I'm, I'm not trolling you. I no, love you guys. You know that. Not at all. It's, no. That's it's why a, we're leading with the PGA Championship. It's a major. I, I, it's one of my favorite tournaments. I went to one of these a couple of years ago when it was in Rochester. It's I, a major I, honestly, knee slapper. This is what it is. <laughs> this is grade A troll. It is. It is. Okay. Yeah. So so what are we looking at here? Um, I, some, some surprising names because here's the thing for me when I look at this and I'm just an outsider. Jesse, you're way more into this. Dustin Johnson, he's never done it. Rory McIlroy is is rated higher than him, though, but I thought Rory has, has played worse. Am I wrong on this, guys? Seems like a Dustin Johnson kind of bet for me. Oh, well, you know what? There's there's some pretty decent value on Dustin Johnson, getting him in at 21 to 1, so 21 times your money, which is pretty decent. Uh, won a Masters a couple years ago. You might remember when they had that Masters in November, not, mm-hmm. not the regular springtime Masters, right. but... Uh, that's interesting because right now, betting favorite, Scotty Scheffler at 12 to 1, the world's number one. Uh, it's chalky, but I actually have a bet on Scheffler just because he calls this his favorite course ever. He's won on this course. He shot a 64 there two weeks ago. And, and right now, um, man, Jess, I don't know who you have, but, uh, it is chalky, but this guy's like a robot right now. World's number one player as well. 
I like uh, Morikawa just because okay, uh, late, lately I've been I've been keeping up with golf and he's been my favorite golfer. So and like the odds of him are pretty decent, seventeen yes. to one on your money. So that's who I'd be leaning towards. Can we? Uh, do we? Uh, are we able to put prop bets out there for how well the Leafs will do on the cars? Yeah, I, I like the. I still like the Leafs by two. <laughs> <laughs> I said. I said they win in seven. I was wrong. They're going to win in nine. Let's go quickly to uh, the second round of the NHL playoffs. Yeah. Obviously, we're going to start with the Florida Bowl. Uh, Tampa mm -hmm. and 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 essentially Miami Sunrise here. What do we have? Uh, and, and who do you guys favor and why? Yeah, right now at Sports Interaction, uh, Florida, the Panthers, the Florida Panthers. I should say Florida because <laughs> people might mix that up. But no, Panthers, slight favorites over the Lightning. It's uh, on paper right now, based on the odds, guys, it's the most competitive of the four series. Okay, It's the one that's mostly close bet as well. We're getting about 55-45 in favor of the Panthers in this one right now. I, I kind of like Tampa just because it is plus money at plus, uh, well, it's 221 uh, on the decimal side of things uh, to win the series. Uh, the, the one thing I'm looking at, I'm circling right now, Colorado apparently has won this series already. I don't understand. <laughs> <No>. that. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I'm just saying St. Louis can be a pain in the you know what? Yes. Uh, Battle of Alberta will be very interesting. I'm really looking forward to that. The Flames favorites there over the Oilers. What about you guys? Battle of Alberta. Who wins it? Oh, I mean, it's it's the team that could score versus the team that can score and grind you. Yeah. The I mean, before the playoffs began, I, I would have thought the Flames would win that. Uh, pretty comfortably, even though I thought the Oilers were underrated. But after seeing yep. how much trouble Dallas gave Calgary, oh yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. One of those teams has the best player in the world, and he seems like he's on a mission. And I'm not going to bet against him. The That's other Connor is Connor McDavid, McDavid. <laughs> John, John Gaudreau. <laughs> Game seven hero, and the last one, and this is over the last couple, I guess. You got Rangers Hurricanes, and this is kind of almost similar odds to Calgary uh, and Edmonton. Yeah, very similar. Uh, Hurricanes favorites in this one. Home home ice advantage as well. I'm kind of interested to see what happens in Carolina as far as goaltending is concerned because we could see a maybe a third goaltender that we all love and know mm -hmm. from the past. Who yes, knows? we is could. Ready, ready for this series because uh, they could use them right now. And lastly, and this isn't even close, which is why it's in such an interesting thing if it happens. Colorado at 125 versus St. Louis at four. Yes. That's a big chasm. Big, big, huge. And, and you kind of look at it going, okay, what, what would it take to beat Colorado? Well, you need a heavy team, a team with probably two decent goaltenders, a heavy defense, timely scoring. Uh, I don't know. I, I looked at St. Louis, Minnesota series, as you guys know, uh, of, of two potential teams that could grind a team into submission. I'm just saying it might be worth a flyer on the St. Louis Blues. I don't, I'm not touching that. I'm not touching it, but I'm just saying it might be worth a flyer. I think I might take that one. Oh, boy. The, the, one, the one I have my eye on. So I think healthy, yep. uh, the Lightning beat the Panthers. So I actually like that the Panthers are the favorite there. Yep. But they're not healthy. Mm -hmm. And nope. well, and we don't know. Like, is Braden Point playing hurt? Is he going to be in the lineup? Good Kucherov, call. is he playing hurt? And w with announcements, would that have an effect on the odds in the next like 48 hours? It it definitely would. Something like a Braden point would significantly change things considering that you're talking about a top three forward. It's interesting though, because when you look at that series itself, Tampa Bay goes from a grinding seven game series back and forth, which was pretty much equal. Mm -hmm. uh, and now they play the division winner who might be a little bit easier of a task for the, I, I, I'm not trying to say Florida is a pushover here or anything like that, no. but if, if Tampa Bay could stay at the same level of what they played in the first seven at times, wow, that's, that's a, that's a tough schedule for, uh, for either one of those teams. Dave Vassell, thank you as always. It's uh, sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. Uh, again, it's sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN as we get ready for the second round. And it starts as of this recording tomorrow. Because we're right back into it with Tampa and Florida kicking things off at 7. David, thank you so much as always. Thanks, guys. In a tiny apartment in Southern California, two college dropouts teamed up to create a watch company that broke all the rules. It kind of sounds like us, Steve. Yeah. One college and university dropout teamed up with a guy that actually graduated and started a hockey podcast. Was... And they were joined by another guy who didn't drop out. That will be our ad. 
You know, it actually doesn't sound similar at all now that you mentioned okay, it. Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> but what you should check out is Movement. They've grown into one of the fastest watch brand, fastest growing watch brands in the world, shipping over 160 countries. It's incredible. Uh, we actually have these watches. They're amazing. And listen, you want to get a watch that matches your personality and style, and Movement's got that for you. They got the look and quality of like a four or five hundred dollar watch. This is very important when it comes to the show. Does it tell time? It does tell time. Oh! And it looks good, and you don't Perfect. pay a big price for it. And here's the thing: we want to be, we want to knock a little more price off that for you. Join the movement, fifteen percent off today with free shipping and free returns by going to movement.com. That's m v m t dot com slash dangle. MVMP, MVMT.com movement slash dangle. So after the game seven loss, you know what I did? Cried. Cried. Walked up, uh, walked up the street a little bit with Jesse. And then we parted ways. And Natalie and I went our way. And Gabby and Jesse went their ways. And I ended up back at home. And I thought, you know what? I need to, I need to, I need to shake this off. So I jumped in the shower. There's no way this is the ad that I think it And is. I lathered on the new ultra premium body wash and aloe vera <laughs> with sea salt to keep your skin feeling clean and moisturized all day. Oh God. But instead for me, I needed it all night and it smells fantastic. And that is from manscaped.com. Use that promo code dangle. And quite literally, you can do that. And then you can do what I did secondly, which is I like to shampoo second because I'm crazy, but I don't want to shampoo and conditioner separately. I want them together. And that's what Manscaped has for you. It's you, you all in one. To do both. It's a clean formula. I don't have time to do both. Yes. I have to go to bed. No. I need to sleep. You got to mourn, shave your balls. That's right. It smells of coconut water, green tea, and turmeric and sage. Come on. Get into it. Manscaped.com, promo code Dangle. We've been talking about these guys forever. And the reason that they keep coming back is because you keep going, oh my God, I discovered Manscaped and it's amazing. So use the promo code Dangle. Get 20% off. Get free shipping, manscaped.com. Guys, let's talk about Magic Spoon. Oh, it's oh, spicy! Habanero. <laughs> it, it doesn't come in habanero. Ghost pepper. <laughs> He's somebody, jalapeno. Listen, somebody reached out the other day and they said, Adam, get your stomach checked out. And I said, you know what? With Magic Spoon, I don't need to. Oh. Zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs each serving. It's a whole 140 calorie serving. It's keto friendly. It's gluten friendly. It's grain free. It's soy free. It's low carb and available in a ton of flavors, not including habanero, at least not yet. We put the request mm -hmm. in. Okay. So magicspoon.com. The promo code is SDP and you need to grab a bundle of cereal. Use that promo code SDP to save five bucks off your first order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product backed with a hundred percent happiness guarantee. So if you do not like it for any reason, they will refund your money. But have you ever done that? No, I haven't. Remember, your next delicious bowl of cereal is guilt-free at magicspoon.com slash SDP. That's SDP is the promo code. Save your five bucks. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this episode. I like the cookies and cream. Mm, who doesn't? Sports Interaction is your home for NHL playoff betting. You know, for those teams that you cheer for. Right, Steve? I bet on the Leafs to win by two. You, I don't, you don't always win. It's not guaranteed. <laughs> I bet on the Leafs to win as well in the seat while we were at the game. I bet yeah. on the Leafs uh, plus one and a half in my bet. Hit. In Unfor game. Unfortunately, on Sports Interaction, I won money on the Leafs losing. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You bet against them? I lo no, no, no. I bet them to win, yeah. but I got plus one and a half goals. Oh. So I live bet. I love live betting the Leafs when they're down, and I did did it when they're down one nothing on sportsinteraction.com and I won but the Leafs lost. So Sports Interaction, <laughs> you already know, it's Canada's sports book with the most competitive odds. Sports Interaction makes it easy to deposit, easy to play, easy to cash out. Kind of like what Jesse did. Join now and see all the sports betting has to offer. Head to sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn. That's sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn, which is what Jesse did mid-game. 19 plus, please play responsibly. Okay, guys, with, we are officially going to get the Battle of Alberta that everybody's been waiting for for 30 years. Pew, pew. Early 90s is the last time this happened. Now, uh, we talked a little bit about it with, you can bet that, it, team with in, insane offense or team that has potential to play insane offense, but that can also grind you down. I, I, I feel like Calgary's got to be the favorite. I'll say this before we talk about it. McDavid was on the ice for 20 of Edmonton's 26 goals in the first round. Man. You talk about a dominant performance. Crazy. How about, how about, can you imagine 
Could you have imagined a couple months ago, we're talking about Mike Smith getting a shutout in game seven? Fuck. Man, no. Man. No. I mean, Jay Woodcroft has changed this the way this team has played completely. 100%. 100%. And he's really embraced the best parts of it. Right? Like, uh, this is a, it's a, it's an offensive juggernaut that is no longer a liability on defense. They make their goalie's life a little easier. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's, he's able to, uh, you know, I, I talked about Steven Stamkos talking about Guy Boucher years and years ago. And he always said the Guy Boucher wanted you to work on your strengths 80% of your, uh, 80% of the time and your weaknesses 20, you know? So, and I mean, Guy Boucher isn't in the league right now. So uh, who knows? Maybe that wasn't the greatest advice, but seems to have worked out for Stamkos. He helped turn Steven Stamkos into a 60 goal score. Right, he helped turn him into one of the defensive coach with a sixty goal score. Imagine yeah, that. He, yeah. he helped turn him into one of the greatest offensive weapons of his generation. Which, and you know, first overall pick, maybe that was always going to happen, but you know, he he allowed him to flourish. Jay Woodcroft has helped this Oilers group that has always had an easy time scoring goals in the regular season score goals in the playoffs. And they've been able to weather the storm. They've been able to hold the fort. They. Survived a game six without Darnell Nurse. Listen, I said it heading into the playoffs. There were there were two teams that weren't getting the respect that they deserved, but were having really good ends to the season. And they were the Washington Capitals, who I think played the Panthers a lot tighter than we all thought. Certainly. And the Edmonton Oilers, who are now in the second round. Um, now, uh, D- it, Dallas's defense got them to the Stanley Cup a couple years ago. They played Calgary really, really hard. Jake Gottinger with an unbelievable goaltending, goaltending performance. I what think star. halfway through the second period, I believe yeah. the shot the shot attempts were sixty to twenty. I saw um, just before Gaudreau scores because they had the graphic on the screen. I think the sh- the shot attempts were one hundred and twenty five to fifty eight. <laughs> it, it was a one man game. It was Jake Ottinger and a bunch of dudes wearing green. <laughs> but that's the thing is Dallas can do that yeah. with a guy like Jake Ottinger and some of the, I mean, I think maybe, maybe they, they, they get a little too much credit for team defense. Seven. Yeah. Sorry. Maybe they get a little too much credit for team defense because they did allow a ton of shots. Um, Jake Ottinger just stood on his head. Adam, J- Jesse pulled this up. I did not know this. So this is game seven. Seven game series. Jamie Ben is first to the series. Tyler Toffoli is first to the series. Vlad Nemestikov is first to the series. Matthew Kachuk is first to the series. And Johnny Gaudreau ends it with his mighty second. <laughs> there just there was people, no scoring. How many people scored their <clears throat> how many game sevens in NHL history have ever had four players score their first goal of the series? Can't be many. No. Like, that might be a record. <laughs> it would be a very obscure record. It would be a very obscure record, but we're dorks. So, embrace it. Embrace it, baby. I, uh... Man, Mike Smith is going to have to be some kind of special if Jake Ottinger is the standard that the Flames are used to. Look at the final shots! 67 to 28? And it was OT, was and it was an amazing yeah. shot by Gaudreau. Mm-hmm. Amazing. It's incredible that yeah, Dallas is able to, was able to push it this far with the way they played. Because they, they truly generated so little offense, but every time they had just a little tiny bit of a window, they'd score. You know, and then the rest of it's just, hey, we're going to block shots, and we're going <laughs> to play in the neutral zone, and that's it. What, what does that do to the confidence of the goalies in the Battle of Alberta. Because if you're Mike Smith, you're like, I just beat Jonathan Quick. I was the better goalie. And he was. Mm-hmm. If you're Jake Markstrom, you're like, fuck, I was just out-dueled seven games out of seven. And we still won. And we still won. Yeah. Mar- like, Markstrom, we still also, won, but Markstrom was good. Me. Markstrom was very good. He was, he was very good. Yeah. He should be very happy with his performance. Yes, yeah, so I'm not saying he was bad, but it's just... He it's, sucks it's, ass. Trade him because he gotta sucks. It's got to be difficult... Look at the, when your team is getting two and a half times the shots that uh, you're facing, <laughs> and they they can't crack them. Mm-hmm. They just couldn't crack them. And who? Okay, interesting. Let me ask you guys this. Okay, uh, how is this series wide open? Because it feels like it's gonna about to be. I feel like Calgary's sick of playing 
like a grinding defensive style, not because they don't do that, but because it's like they're they're tired of going up against that. I feel like with the freedom that Edmonton is going to give them, yeah. Edmonton's defense is just not the same as Dallas's. We can all say that. I feel like they're going to enjoy that first couple of games where they're like, we can skate again. We can breathe a little. You ever taken a dog to the park? That's what it's going to feel like. I, I t- I the t- off leash. I tell you what mine does. I, I take Iggy off his leash. He takes a few strides forward. He looks back at me. And then he goes. <laughs> so I think it, maybe it'll be a bit of a, uh, you know, feeling out for the first few minutes of the series. And then Matthew Kachuk's going to look back at Daryl Sutter, and Daryl Sutter's going to stare back at him blandly. <laughs> and, and then he's going to know. And then, yeah. yeah, and then they just fly. Who do you think, who do you guys give the edge to in this series? Calgary better not let Edmonton play like that. If, you, if yeah. Calgary is allowing Edmonton to get scoring chances off the rush and play a really open style of hockey, they're going to really struggle to win the series. But it's McDavid. Yeah, well, how, gotta, how do you, you not try, let him? You got to try and contain him, right? You know... I think Calgary overall is a better team uh, than the LA Kings, but uh, they don't have they don't have a one two of Kopitar Dano up the middle, so they got to find and McDavid diff- still did that. Yeah, yeah, they got to find another way to uh, to shut him down. The shocking thing about Edmonton too is the goal scoring they're getting from everybody else. Right, like it's it's their season was saved on goals by Tyson Berry and Cody Ceci. Like that, Cody that, Cece, who is still in the Stanley Cup playoffs, <laughs> while the Penguins and Leafs are not. That's what's by that's the way <laughs> been driving these wins and for he, Edmonton. Didn't Cece score the game winner? He yeah, sure yeah. did. The game seven game winner. So and Cody Cece scored a game seven winner while the Penguins and Leafs both fall. Please kill me. Then, for as many questions as we had about uh, Evander Kane, he had a fantastic series. It was it was terrific uh, throughout it. Came up huge in game six. So. If for, I don't think the for, question was ever, will he be good at hockey? <laughs> it's will he be able to keep playing hockey? Um, but they, they've showed up and their only struggles are on defensively. And they've been able to clamp down with Mike Smith in the, in the end of the series there. And they're going to get their offense. So I don't know. It's going to be real tough for Calgary to stop Edmonton. You know how I know I'm not as hurt about the Leafs this year? I felt good about the game seven as bad as it feels. And I, and I don't want to say that... Um, I'm I'm not embarrassed or I'm not upset. I want to throw that out there. But I'm going to be able to watch the second round without it hurting this year, and I like that. The, the, this this Calgary-Edmonton uh, series oh. has... We have... You literally... If anybody tells you they know how this series is going to go, they're wrong. Battle of Alberta you have no Battle idea. Of Florida. Well, and that's Lucky what I want to get to next. So that series, Tampa and Florida, um, I mean, it was nasty in the first round last year. It was nasty in the preseason this year. The the Carter Verhage Bowl. <laughs> so, um, by the way, James Myrtle tweeted that, oh, the Leafs have to be upset about trading Carter Verhage. I'm like, he must be kidding. Oh, yeah. Lou Lamorello, like, he's trolling. You must yeah. be kidding, James. I, uh, when they made that five for one trade, <laughs> I was like, okay, this is, this is the one guy out of this deal that you may regret. Maybe. And that was 2015, I think they made that trade. Man, we can't be regretting trades from... 25. No, I know. We can't and be like that. He still took a while. Yeah. Right? He still took a he while. He didn't break until last year. The Leafs, were the Leafs going to be... Uh, like, they weren't patient with Mason Marchment, and he's playing regularly. And the 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 minor league team was stacked a few years yeah. ago. Yeah. So like, who knows? Like, who knows how that goes? It, it might not have even been... It, it might not have been an environment that would have allowed him to flourish. I agreed. Now, when you watch the Washington series with Florida, and then you watch the Tampa-Toronto series... The Panthers are chaotic and it's worked out for them all year, right? They've high flying. I mean, we saw the Leafs Florida game uh, a few months ago and it was just crazy. Great ability to come back. Yes, but they can't do that against Tampa. No. Tampa will steamroll. Yeah. If if Florida plays chaotic hockey against Tampa, we had tiny little bits of chaos. The odd Kerfoot bad pass, the Justin Hall thing that we pointed no. out earlier in the... Florida does that all the time. Yeah, no, they're... they're uh, Far less perfect than even I thought. I do think it's funny that they had two overtime games in one. What do you so, mean? Well, there's no three on three, but there's five on five, and it yes. suited them just fine. <laughs> but uh, their their starts, their first periods. I mean, uh, if it's a best of seven only, including the first periods, the Capitals won that series. You know, uh, but for me, 
this is a this is a relatively easy win for Tampa if Braden Point and Nikita Kucherov are healthy, which they're super not. So that gives Florida a huge advantage over Tampa. I don't know how if they don't have Braden Point or Nikita Kucherov. Like Kucherov, I don't even know if he's at fifty percent right now. Braden Point certainly not. Ah, boy, it's going to be real tough to weather that storm for Tampa. I got something I wanted to bring up to you guys about this Florida team uh, that happened in the Washington series that I don't think is is going. Uh, nobody's making a big deal about it. Uh, the Florida Panthers. What's their power play percentage? In the oh, pro- it's zero, isn't it? Zero <laughs> percent. The Florida Panthers didn't convert one power play opportunity in that entire series. That's what, and they still won. And they still won. So either they they find a way to turn back on their offense, mm-hmm. uh, which they it struggled to do, and then it did in an instant uh, whenever they were down and they needed something real quick. Um, but either it turns into this super magical run where their season was on the line with an empty net mm-hmm. and also down by three goals, and they somehow blow out Tampa, or they can just continue to not have the offensive firepower that we've seen throughout the regular season. Right. It's one of those two outcomes. What do we always call the Stanley Cup playoffs, though? So it's, it's a war of attrition. And those speed plays, those bursts of offense, those are going to be harder and harder to come by. As this, as these playoffs go, and as this series goes, I don't know which way the series goes. Man. I, I, you know, it's while you say, while you say that, you, you guys are talking about that. It kind of triggered something in me, and I'm, I hate to make it all about the lease, but it fucking is. Let's um, do it. Oh, the one based thing on my mentions, it's absolutely all about the Leafs all the time. Always, either you're cheering for them or against them. We don't say rent free; it's implied. Yeah. So, the one thing I'll say about the Toronto team that I hope they get a little more of is a little more that we can wear you down. Mm. I don't think anyone has ever said Gotten about the Toronto Maple well. Leafs. That no, no one's ever said like, oh, that's a team that'll really grind you, grind you down. And I'm not talking about like not for nine years. Ki- throwing Kyle Clifford uh, hits or whatever it was. I'm talking about just, fuck, I don't want to play these guys. Yeah. Fuck. No, like the, when you see the, them come up on the calendar, you go, fuck. Like, do you think the Flames like playing Dallas? No, they fucking hated it. No. Well, and... and- Kudos to Dallas because that's most teams looking at the Flames. True. <laughs> yeah. Right. True. Um, the 2012 and 2014 Kings teams that won grinded your bones to make their bread. <laughs> like that was just a, a, a and Tampa a does grinding that. team. Tampa's a, Tampa's a good mix of we can score a pile if we want to, but we can also shut you down. And that's where I think you can mitigate the losses of, or at least the skill losses of. Kucherov and point because you have Nick Paul scoring two goals in game seven. You know, you've got the opportunity for guys to come in. You got Hagel who did have over 20 goals. And yes, he only had three uh, in his first 15 games in Tampa, but so fucking what everyone he was playing in Chicago. Somebody had to score. Leafs took a chunk out of him too. They did. They did. But I, but what I'm saying is that the depth is there to shut that down. I, I, I'd be curious about that series. I I'm taking Tampa all the way in that one. I could be crazy, but, I, I don't know. I, I just don't think that. How do you? How does Florida play that kind of game and win? For the sake of Leaf fans, I'd like Tampa to win. I feel yeah, like it'd be I make easier. Us feel better. It'd be easier on Leafs fans. Would it? I don't know. Oh, um, Canes beat Boston in uh, Game Seven, uh, and the Rangers beat the Pens um, in Game Seven. They're Timmy Panarin. And here's the thing: I want to talk about the Pens in Boston first. Is this the last ride for the core of both of those teams? Because Bergeron... Blowing a 3-1 series lead is tough. Bergeron shook everybody's hand on the way out, right? Oh, for Boston. Yeah. For Boston. And everybody's like, well, maybe he was retiring. Maybe not. He's allowed to shake their hands. Maybe he's done that before. I don't know. Uh, Sidney Crosby, boy, I thought that series was over and then he wasn't in it. Right. And that's tough. If you're a Pens fan, and, and also you look at, what's the, uh, is it Jay Fresh that does the deserve to win a meter? Who, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, <laughs> I think the New York Rangers are like 7% or something like that, and, and they still won. I still have a problem with that. So, so you play that game 100 times, the Rangers win seven. No. You don't think so? No. Oh, I still think, man, it's Pittsburgh Shisterkin. deserved that game. It's Igor Shesterkin. Yeah. Is he in net for all 100 of those games? Maybe. Not in a row. Like, then no. You know what I mean? Like if he's in net, 
I think it's just a general sense you, of how the game Igor went. You think Igor Shosturkin's going to goalie you 7% of the time? Stop. <sighs> well, stop. long story short, uh, the Rangers did goalie the pens I, there's no yep. that Gensel goal was insane where he kicked the puck up in the air and then oh, like man. that was just crazy I'm like P- Pittsburgh's got it. it's over um, did you wrong. think it was a high stick no what did you guys Close. make of the Close, Marcus Patterson play I think it was that's kind of what uh, Pittsburgh chalking up their loss to you know that was a uh, let me see Post Listen, game. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, like Toronto, did not close. They should have closed. The Patterson thing, it shouldn't, the Patterson thing should never happen. Mm-hmm. As in, don't put yourself in the position where something like that can happen. Was it wrong? Yeah, sure. But everybody can point to a ref missing one thing or another, like we did with Tavares. Yep. The reality is the Leafs should have closed. The Pens should have closed. Right, right. So what, what happened exactly? So he Marcus a- Pedersen's behind the net. His helmet get, gets ripped off and by rule, he either has to put it back on in a reasonable amount of time quickly or he has to go to the bench and then somebody else has to come on. And amongst all of that happening, John Marino uh, passes the puck to the Rangers and they score. So <laughs> it, was, it was a turnover in the zone and they score their goal that tied it up, that sent it... Uh, it was overtime, right? Where it mm-hmm. finished? Sends it to OT... Um, that was the game tying goal. And the Penguins, after the game, Crosby commented on it. He said, um, that terrible rule ends up probably being the difference in the game. Uh, talking about oh, Marcus Pedersen's helmet being ripped off. Yeah, that's that's the equivalent of Sidney Crosby standing naked on a mountain and screaming, fuck. So <laughs> I, can, I can almost guarantee they're going to make a de- uh, change to the rule next year. So Crosby said it's a terrible rule. And Mike Sullivan says... Uh, when asked about how do you feel about the rule, this is from the Penguins Twitter account. It sucks. His helmet was pulled off intentionally, which it kind of was in the play amongst. It certainly was. Yeah, it almost Lafreniere did it. Like, like, let's just call it what it is. And yeah. you know what? If you're not cheating, you're not trying. They didn't call him on it. It worked out. And how, is it? Don't put yourself in the position right. like the Leafs did and not close the series yeah. when you can close the series. Yeah. Close just, the fucking series so it doesn't come down to that. Jesse Marshall. Made I hate that point. I hate to, three chances. Like it's 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 like Babs, right? The one thing about Mike Babcock's book that you could say is he said it's literally in the title. Leave no doubt. Yep. Don't leave it to chance. Leave a bunch of doubt. Leave. Um. So the playoffs. So we're gonna have Canes Rangers. Uh listen. No question, the Pens were the better team. No question, the Canes are the better team. Here, I. I, I do. Oh, well, oh Boston? Out. You want to do Boston? Well, no, no, I just want to point out there were two Game 7 OT winners yesterday. Johnny Gaudreau or Tammy Pinar. Be- best offensive player for the Rangers. Best offensive player for the for the Flames. Stars show up in these moments. They do. They do. Are you insinuating something? Nope, but I am saying it's not a coincidence. Well, I mean, yeah. Patrick Maroon got a double OT Game 7 winner a couple years ago. It's it's not a hard and fast rule. I'm if you if you're talking about the Leafs, I think their star players showed up. Morgan Riley and John Tavares scored in in Game Seven. What are you showing me, Jesse? Oh, you the, hadn't the seen play? the uh, Marcus Pedersen play, so he gets his helmet ripped off. He has to go to the bench. It's now an odd man advantage, and then See, the Rangers score. You've okay. We're watching it. It's very obvious what happened there. It's very obvious what happens here, right? Mm-hmm. Lafreniere absolutely intentionally <laughs> takes his helmet off. We need to be able to correct this very obvious thing. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, so I was talking about the challenge and it's going to be over uh, or it's not going to overturn anything. It's always going to be a penalty. But this this directly leads to a goal. It doesn't. It doesn't because they're not in the play. Like if, if Pedersen... Let's say can if he can come back around and make a play on the puck, which goes around here, and then they score. You say okay, that directly, but we don't really know if it is directly to a goal because Mourinho uh, he passes the puck to essentially to the Rangers and he loses it and they turn it over there. That turnover wasn't <laughs> caused by Pedersen not having his helmet, right? But he could have been anywhere in the world other than like here, let, let it run, like because where does he go? It, the- he skates off. Immediately, like he, he right. could have been in front of the net. He could have blocked a shot. He could have mm-hmm. done this. He could have done that. We'll never know. Yeah. You think it should be, they call the play dead and the, that's a penalty on the Rangers. Two minute power play. Yeah. But if you didn't see it, like, right, you're not going to call it. And, and, you know, if, if any of you right now are saying that's a play that happens all the time, I think you've identified the problem. Right. And it's also, 
Patterson, how, how many infractions are there in a game? <laughs> a, 50. A lot of the Pens players got the rule wrong in that he doesn't have to go right to the bench. He can pick up the helmet and put it on. Huh. That's also an option in the rules. Oh, did he not know? So he didn't know that in the moment. Well, he should know that. You, you got to know that. You, should, maybe you got to know that. You know, you, that's, that's, you got to know. The, you, like, you're playing the game. You got to know the fucking rules. I'm man. like, you could you, the helmet's right there because it's the, bad. I believe the rule. I don't have it in front of me. I saw it on uh, Twitter the other day or when this was happening. Ooh. But the rule is you either skate off or you put on your helmet. I believe the quote is in a reasonable amount of time within play uh, or you get the penalty if you don't actually do either one of those. But you have the option to put the helmet back on. <clears throat> he could and be, he didn't do it. He could be. The helmet's right there. It's right there. It's right. It's sitting right there. He could. And he's just and complaining. So I w- yeah. what I was looking at was, did the ref say you got to get off? No, the yeah. ref's not looking. That's the problem here. Look at the ref in the corner. He's staring at the play. Well, he's doing the right thing. Is you it know? the ref or the linesman? Yeah. It's, yeah. Oh, or, okay. Somebody behind the play. So I, I want to move on to uh, this. Just the series. Canes. Uh, Canes and Rangers. If the Rangers do beat the Canes, how will it be? Uh, by attacking Tony D'Angelo on every play <laughs> and trying to burst through the right side of the ice. I like, I like that we're going from the hate Tony D'Angelo bull to the hate Tony D'Angelo even more bull. <laughs> you thought Bruins fans hated Tony D'Angelo. Wait till you get a load of Bru- Oh, Rangers the MSG fans. is going to be wild when he touches the puck. Oh, boy. We're going to get another round of racist chants. And someone, someone on Twitter was like, "Man, quotation marks <laughs> have never been more important." Right? It's yes, but uh, um, I, I mean, the Hurricanes are clearly the favored team. Have to be. They're clearly the deeper team. But if Shosturkin is Shosturkin, but if Shosturkin is Shosturkin, but oh man, like the the Penguins had a pretty clear weakness in in net, and Louis Domingue was. As good as any third stringer could be expected to be. Uh, Tristan Jari was like hobbling after game seven. So he was clearly playing hurt. Uh, the Hurricanes don't have that problem. There's there's Freddie who's going to be coming back. Potentially. Mm-hmm. There's Ranta who has been fine. And in the event, neither of those dudes work. You still have Kachekov. Ah, uh, boy. The Rangers... The Rangers are a star goalie and four dudes <laughs> at times. You know, they were in game seven, a star goalie and four dudes. I have a hard time picturing them overcoming the waves of the Carolina, Carolina Hurricanes. I I think the Rangers are going to really put up a fight here, and I think I might p- be picking them to win because at, the, at game seven, it was finally... Kreider and Z- Zabinajad showed up. Yes. The, they weren't there for one <clears throat> through six, and all of a sudden they showed up in the series, and they were fabulous and unbelievable. It was uh, the iPad that did it. What, what do you mean? It was Kreider attacking the iPad. <laughs> That's right. That's what woke <laughs> yes. the Rangers yes. up. That was so funny. Uh, in the end, like their point totals and their goal totals look great in the series, and uh, they were fantastic. But I think like if if they're cooking, and like Adam Fox, really, who disappeared for sections there versus the Pens, if he's there, I don't know. I think the Rangers are going to give them a real chance here. Andrew Kopp. Andrew Kopp. Really good, really good pickup for the Rangers. A team that obviously needed the help up front. Mm-hmm. Andrew Kopp. Good pickup. Um, let's get into the last playoff series before I have a couple like news things to pass along. One that broke over the course of the show, but we'll just go. I want to talk quickly about the Blues. Ooh. Um and the uh who are the Blues playing? Oh my God, Colorado, Colorado, Colorado. Colorado. Yeah, out of sight, out of mind. I right? know, right? So here's what I want to say. You know, everybody's talking about the Leafs. Ah, oh, you got to get it done. You got to get it done. Time for the Leafs to get it done. When are they just gonna fucking get it done? I'm gonna give you some names. I'm gonna give you some fucking names. No, call them out, Adam. Give me the names of a bunch of <laughs> losers. They're not losers. <laughs> Rantanen. Oh, Landis Cog. Fucking loser. McKinnon. <laughs> Burakovsky. <laughs> Kadri. Yeah. McCarr. Well, not McCarr quite yet. He's 23. Oh my God. More like McCants. Yeah. <laughs> Johnson, Taze, Manson, Gerard. Some of these guys have just got here. Glenn. Glenn. <laughs> what? What does Brian Glenn have to do with this? <laughs> this is a team. He played in the is, NHL, you see. Is it fair to say 
that it's time for the Colorado Avalanche. Certain times you see teams and you're like, it's time to get it done. It's yeah. time to fucking get it done. I see producer Drew out there making a bunch of hot takes about the Leafs. Hello, Captain Projection. Second round and out Colorado Avalanche. Are you kidding me? Making all those things? What, what have they done? What have they done? Oh, he knows. What have they done? He knows. It they haven't done anything. It keeps him up and that and editing my it, LFR. It should keep him up, man. And here's the thing. Burkowski's gone at the end of the year. Kadri's gone at the end of the year. You got another year of McKinnon at that sweetheart deal, and then you're going to have to pay him all the fucking money. Get it done this year, Colorado. And here's the problem. You got the former Stanley Cup champions, St. Louis Blues, that haven't changed that much. Yes, they're down Petrangelo. I get that. But you've got a team that literally relied on Billy Husso to take it to the postseason. And then Jordan Bennington, the Stanley Cup winning goalie, is now back and playing better than ever. And you've got most of the forward group, most of the defense group, the same coach, the same ideas, the same plays, and the St. Louis Blues, which were a perennial, when are these guys going to fucking get it done? Even through the 90s, they were. They got it done. Yep. Colorado. I, 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 like, I know that there's a huge chasm right now. We talked about it in the sports interaction segment between like the betting favorites. Man, I would take St. Louis all day in this series. You want to make it? Wow. Absolutely. The they the, the St. Louis can grind you. They can grind you down. They can. Um, man, you're talking about one of the slowest teams in the league against one of the fastest. Mm -hmm. So that's a fascinating. It match. sure is tough. That's the tough one. Uh, that's hard. St. Louis is bigger. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, more grinding, nastier. Goaltending cannot screw the Avalanche here. Grubauer, I really thought failed them in the later part of that series against Vegas. It did last year. So now they got he Kemper. Did. He had a good first round. Will the Avs potentially be victims of their own success? Because they haven't played in a week. Daryl Sutter said playing the Avalanche in the first round would be a waste of eight days. You know what's messed up? Is it was seven? <laughs> Dude, they're a dominant team, but they haven't played. If they don't win game one, I think they might have a hard time getting in the series. If the Avs do get game one, and then they have an opportunity to get even better as the series goes on. I have a hard time seeing how St. Louis wins. Seriously? Yeah. Because especially with the comeback season that Tarasenko's had. Because that's the thing, right? The Avs are fucking sick. <laughs> so, I don't... Oh, wait. No, there is a way the Avs can screw it up. <clears throat> Nas! <laughs> knock it off! Fair. Once and for all, <clears throat> knock it off! The last time these two teams met in the Stanley Cup playoffs, Naz got an eight-game suspension. Before this season. Play! If Naz and Kadri is on the ice for every game of the series, they'll win. Uh, before this series, before this season, uh, since the Stanley Cup run where Tarasenko had 11 goals and 17 points in 26 games, he had scored two total. Wow. Two total points in eight playoff games until the first round of this series where he had five goals in six games. Tarasenko's X factor. Here. He's only he's the th one of three five goal scorers on the St. Louis Blues in that first round. <laughs> um I had I had a vision before the oh, Stanley Cup. I don't like oh. the stank on that immediately. <laughs> I, had, oh I don't God. like I don't like how you said was, that at all. I was sitting in my gold and blue room mm -hmm. and uh, you don't I was like, that. oh my God, I think I can see something in the sky. And it says the St. Louis Blues are gonna win the Stanley Cup. So uh that was my pick, and I'm not backing off that. And I think they're gonna take care of business here versus Colorado. And Perron is on fire? Who? Oh, sorry. Noted Alan Walsh play. <laughs> David Perron is on fire. He did great first. I don't know, guys. They're going to do it. You know, there's like, Blues fans who were pissed at me for, I think I picked the Wild in my bracket. Yeah, none, nobody picked. I don't even remember. The Wild, uh, the Blues to win, except for me. It was an we even did this series. On the show. It was a pretty even yeah, series. Yeah, but everybody thought the Wild were going to win, except for this guy sitting here. Oh, so welcome. Flip. Welcome <laughs> to the bandwagon. I will open the door to the bus. Uh, I'm going to hit the little lever. It's 250 a, a bus ride. All right, Welcome. I'll give you a 250. It's You're right. He's right. Cheap bus 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 ride. Ride. Yeah, it's real cheap. It's Doug Ford's new plan for cheap transportation. <laughs> 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 uh, welcome to the bus. I think this Blue. is a closer series than the odds makers are making it. And Colorado is a team. Maybe this changes this year. Colorado has not, has not got it done. It's called, say the F word. Failed. No, they're frauds. Fraud. Oh. <laughs> no, I actually think 
Florida's good. I, I, I'm. I was yeah, speaking of effort, I think a Florida, lot of fuck. Florida's gonna get found out. I think. I think Florida's getting found out against Tampa, man. I'm, I do. Ooh. I really believe that. Oh, I, 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 man, Tampa is so good, dude. The Panthers have no idea what's coming. I'm no sad. no idea. I'm sad. The Some idea. Out, but look at these four series. Oh, they're gonna be sick. Lucky we got us. good hockey. They're gonna be sick, dude. These yeah. are four fantastic series. Yeah, this is going to be great. Now, a couple of things. Uh, so Lane Lambert is taking over with the Islanders. He was the assistant coach under uh, Barry Trotz. He is now the head coach. That's Lou quick. Lamorello said in the press conference, <laughs> I think they were ready to go, that he maybe misspoke about needing a new voice. He just said that Lane Lambert's a much different, bigger personality than perhaps Barry Trotz, who's a little more quiet. Huh. I don't know how that changes anything, huh. but I guess he wanted to correct that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to tell you is that Peter DeBoer is now fired he is out in Vegas, and Steve did not know this. It just broke about an hour no, ago. No, I did not. <laughs> and this is interesting. I got a Wyshynski tweet here that I think you'll like. Um, Peter DeBoer had an awesome first season in Florida, then out after year three. New Jersey making the Stanley Cup final, then out during year four. In San Jose making the Cup final, and he did make a conference final in year four, then fired in year five. And then Vegas makes the conference final, makes the penultimate round in year two, fired in year three. It's like uh, what what I've basically <clears throat> said about John Tortorella in the past, where he can be a real shot in the arm, right? but there's a time limit, and there's there's an expiration date, and uh, his <clears throat> coaching tenure sort of ages like milk. I think in this particular case, I mean, maybe maybe Vegas is bad because of Peter DeBoer. There's injuries, yeah, and I think that Vegas is mismanaged. I think they mismanage this. I think it's always the shiny thing. Mm -hmm. They got a lot of star power there, but it's older. And it's a lot of money. And we don't know how it's all going to fit into the cap. I look at the way they're built. And this coach perhaps does not match the market. But I think he matches the construction of the team. Barry Trotz. You give Barry Trotz Alex Petrangelo and Mark Stone. Ugh. Alec Martinez. They're not going to be a fun team to play. No, no, no. That no. is a match made in heaven. And I imagine it was a factor in DeBoer getting fired. They have to, they got to make, the Vegas Golden Knights need to make Barry Trotz the highest paid coach in the league. You know, it's going to be crazy when they eliminate Colorado in the second round next year <laughs> and Nathan McKinnon's a free agent. That'll be nuts. That will be cool. Now that I like that you're really leaning into that. Oh, I just think I just think it's hilarious that Drew's like Colorado's really good. Also, the Leafs who are about the same in the results department. Like, give me a fucking break. Yeah. Come on, Drew. I hope Avalanche fans pay attention to you now instead of my tweet where I said Joe Sackick should be fired. Now that Pete DeBoer's gone, will they tell players when they're traded? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's 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 McCrimmon that doesn't tell people. Yeah, but you know, it's maybe, McCrimmon's job. Maybe they came as a package deal to not tell people, and now that <clears throat> one's gone, McCrimmon will be like, "Okay, I'll tell players what they're." Or maybe you just maybe. get George McFever on it because he's still there, isn't he? Isn't he the president? Yeah, George yeah, McFever. Yeah, yeah. yeah, get your boy on it. Yeah, Call yeah, a player. Man. It's like it's like uh, in Moneyball. Yeah, you've been traded. Here's the number. That's that's it. <laughs> Here you go. So is that all? Yep. Best of luck. <laughs> 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 that is an awkward scene. Uh, all right, let's get into the press conference. If you're looking for quality and performance, you got to check out Roback Activewear. Uh, it's some of the some of the best stuff that we own too. Performance polos, uh, Q-zips, hoodies, like a whole new meaning to the word comfortable. So comfortable, so beautiful, but also a total game changer when it comes to like soft, stretchy material. Hockey players love it. Hockey commentators who don't play a lot of hockey like us, we love it too. I was about to say, I like stretchy. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, hockey players, I think they stretch in a different spot than we stretch. I think they stretch more up here and we might be I more down need here. more research. But that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's also performance Q-zips, incredibly comfortable, perfect for a day on the ice or a day on the links. Oh. Or a day in your podcast chair. Yeah. I wore a Roback shirt on Sunday hey. when I was uh, at a golf though. There he is. Practicing my swing. Oh, typical last fan golfer, eh? <laughs> so do yourself a favor and use the code DANGLE at Roback.com for a generous 20% off your first order. That's R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com. That's 20% off first order. All polos, Q-zips, hoodies, and tees with the code DANGLE. It's just in time for the second round of the playoffs. Go check out Roback.com. Hey, listen, when you're hiring for your company, you need to cast the widest net possible, but then you got to narrow it down quickly. You want to bring a whole bunch of people in and then you want to find out who is qualified. Workable is what you have to check out. There are 46% more jobs being posted than before the pandemic right now and 44% 
fewer candidates. So we need to get you the right candidates and we need to get you fast and Workable does that. Workable will automate repetitive tasks like scheduling interviews so you don't have to worry about that. You can focus on what's important and they do things like video interviews and e-signatures for you. Done. Um, So listen, Start hiring today with a risk-free 15-day trial. If you hire during the trial, which many do, it won't cost a thing. Just go to workable.com to start hiring. That's workable, which is hiring made easy. Guys. Yes. Have you solved the biggest question plaguing your lives right now? Uh, what? I don't know. How much butt fun you're having. Oh, we're not doing, we're not doing butt fun. Why not? Uh, Why can't we do butt fun? We're very I've upset had, about butt fun. I've had too much butt fun. I'm not surprised. You seem like a butt fun kind of guy. <laughs> And if you try SeatGeek, you too can have some butt fun. Put your butt in the right seat to have a good time. Download the SeatGeek app, Geek app that is. Uh, listen, uh, we're, there's, there could be anything. Your second round of the playoffs, I don't know what that's like. Hmm. But if you do, no. SeatGeek's the app for you. I'm, I'm just saying, it's, like, it's not butt geek. No, it's SeatGeek mm-hmm. where your butt sits. And in a seat. You get 20 bucks off your first purchase. Ooh. With the promo code SDP at SeatGeek.com or in the SeatGeek app. That again is SDP, 20 bucks off SeatGeek or download the app. Go to SeatGeek.com. Do it. The Presser SDP. The Steve Dangle Press Conference. I forgot to do this last week. Uh, I want to congratulate our winner of SDP and Fan Fridays at Hunter Dillon 95 who uh, tweeted this lovely picture of uh, Adam Wilde, Steve Dangle, and Jesse Blake enjoying the, the on the podcast, watching us just before the Stanley Cup playoffs. Uh, congratulations. You have won a $50 gift card to the SDPN shop. We Celebrate do SDPN Fan Fridays <laughs> by tweeting out your picture, watching some SDPN content. Cool. <laughs> it is cool. It's very cool. Very Steve, cool. did you stream on Twitch last night? No, I, t- I streamed on Twitch yesterday afternoon. How was it? Oh my God, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Just punch him, Jesse. Just punch him. He deserves it. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. I played a little bit of Red Dead. Oh, it was a reminder of how long that game is because I basically did, like, I accomplished next to nothing. Um, but we're now in Valentine. Mm-hmm. We're in Horseshoe Overlook. And uh, now that the Leafs are out, I think my... Red Dead Redemption 2 streams per 60 is about to go up. <laughs> I'm really excited, man. I, I love your, your I loved your original one. I didn't get to see the one yesterday, but it's kind of fun just to see you playing the game that is so much fun. Like that game rules. Right? I love that game. I was thinking, I got, you know, with the history thing, I'm like, Assassin's Creed makes a lot of sense because it's all historical stuff, right? I'm, I'm playing Odyssey right now so then I can play Valhalla because apparently that's really good. And it's all like every they literally recreated greece it's fucking nuts like they every historical thing that should be there is there everything you'd love something that i talked about on this stream there's a youtube channel called real pixels that uh breaks down all the chapters of red dead redemption 2 and how historically accurate the game is that's nuts and like down to like like oh yeah like down to like canned goods that's nuts and like oh yeah so this section of the game is based on um you know at 1899 colorado and yeah they ate this particular kind of like canned good like it was it's the sort of thing that i think you would love i'm not selling it very well <laughs> i can't wait to find out about canned goods yeah i'm serious i actually think that i know really i know you are like- uh, quick thing for you steve uh the question from jam is on toast is there going to be a watch an Oilers game uh, with Steve Dango, kind of like they did with Montreal last season? Uh, I, or watch a uh, Flames game or whatever it's going to be. Yes. Yes is yeah, the answer? It, no, it's going to be uh, watch uh, the Battle of Alberta. Okay. So, and I, I, I assume there will be a victor <laughs> of the <laughs> Battle of Alberta. And then, I, I don't know what the official, official plans are, but there's going to be a uh, watch a Battle of Alberta with Steve Dango. But I can't do games two and three, and I believe Grav is going to do those. Perfect. So there will be continuing watch a blank with Steve Dangle. Uh, this is from clearly a bot once again on our Discord press conference questions channel. Hey Adam, I ask you this very often because clearly a bot's always on top oh, of it. Shit. Where the fuck is the Emu War history corner? Shit, I didn't research it. <laughs> That's what happened. Fuck, I forgot. Sorry, you don't have it ready. Piece no. of shit. 
I know. <laughs> That's the grass. Whatever, it'll be worth the wait. <laughs> you know what, guys? Baby steps. He's wearing SDPN. Yeah. Merch. Nah, I, yeah. I'm actually, wearing a T-shirt. Look at that. They got me one. What do you Look think? Look at that. What do you think? Sexy. Sexy. For your birthday. Looks great. Um, the other thing, uh, SDPN shop. That's yeah. I want to shout out to uh, uh, Hardesh, Arman, and Rahaf for doing an amazing <laughs> what. It's just so depressing. Oh, <laughs> especially Rahaf. Yeah. Oh, okay. Man. So, so Rahaf got jobbed on Game Over Toronto because she got all the losses. The Lightning, the Leafs and Lightning played eleven times this year. There were six losses. She somehow went zero and four. What are the odds? The mathematical odds. Oh my God, so, Rahaf, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, Rahaf. But they did an amazing job through the seven game series. Um. And I have to say that the last game over, <laughs> I mean, it does fly in the face of, um, of of what we said earlier. We don't actually do better when the Leafs lose, but that stream, uh, you know, post game seven was unbelievable. They did an amazing job with it. And currently we're sitting at, I think, between audio downloads and, and video watches. It's like something like 15 or 16,000, awesome. which is a, br it's a brand new show. It's unbelievable. It will be back next year. And hopefully they are too, if they want to come back. Well, we want him back. And obviously, don't forget about Audie and Peter uh, doing uh, Calgary Flames. Uh, uh, you know, their game, their game seven uh, thing was amazing. They did an incredible job. And they will be back for the next round. Yeah, they get to keep going. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Which was the idea for Toronto, too, by the way. God. Anyway. And uh, anyway, I think that's it. Right? Are we done? We all done? We're all done. Okay. Well, we're all done. So here's how it's going to work. This this week's a bit funny, okay? Uh, My Steve fault. Steve and Jesse and I will be releasing shows today, Wednesday, and Thursday. Wednesday and with CJ. Wednesday with CJ, which is awesome. It's our end of end of season depression uh, tradition. <laughs> uh, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday next week, because Steve is flying out to Winnipeg uh, for a wedding. And it's also a holiday long weekend this weekend. So uh, Monday is a holiday for everybody. We want everybody to have their holiday time. So we will be uh, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then obviously Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Just a programming note. Boop. <sighs> I wish the Leafs were still playing. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks. Man, I was really, I was prepared. If you go back and watch the stream with 10 seconds to go, I really did thought they were going to be in it, man. As always next year. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Get it Sportsbook. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W Y L D E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.